2020 and 2021 at 6.36 p.m. Before we uh, start the pledge, Mr. Smith has brief announcement he wants to make. Uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you for being here this evening. If you uh, are planning to speak and haven't had a chance to fill out the visitor form, please fill that out and uh, we will collect it during the public speaking portion. Uh, second of all, a reminder that our current policy is asking students, staff, as well as visitors uh, to wear masks. And so we're asking you to please follow our policy um, and help us uh, accept a good example by following our uh, current policy. So you are uh, compliant with that and um, help is appreciated. So thank you. Very well. Our brother the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Mr. Willis, you come on. Thank you. 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 Our mission, by comparing the statements, our mission is empowering all students to reach their fullest potential. Our Viking values are trust, leadership, communication, collaboration, accountability, integrity, and respect. As a safety reminder, we are here to the See Something, Say Something campaign. On the uh, agenda here on item five, we have a couple sets of minutes. I saw Mr. Lewis that they were sent out on email. Around the top of the As if anybody had a chance to review them, okay. they will. I don't no. um, I, I didn't. I expected at least one of them to be able to. I, I actually got through the one with the regular meeting, but not, not the special meetings that have been there. The regular meeting said I had a number of corrections that I wanted to make on the mask at the table. Uh, you, you can either read the minutes because people have not had a chance to get through them, or you can just take them all. I read the table both sets. All well set. Well set. Listen by myself. Second, I put the the table with minutes. When you voice vote on that, say you can write voice vote on it. Yes, you can. All those in favor, to please sit down and say aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chair, you have a voice vote, and it's a table. All right, adoption of the agenda. We'll start. I'll ask our administrators to give us an overview of their consent agenda items for tonight. Mr. Bruce. Yes, uh, we're asking you to approve your monthly financial reports. It's been submitted uh, September 14th and also approved by the Finance Committee. Uh, approved the recommendation to donation of $150 for going to the Marching Band from the Hartford uh, Library Association. Uh, recommendation number three and four are, uh, are the current appropriations and amended certificates uh, that is done this time of year, and that's for fiscal year 2022. Uh, submitted uh, to you actually today, uh, September 20th. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Are there any questions for Mr. Lewis about his uh, items tonight? Bring them up, Mr. Schmidt. Uh, recommendation number one, we actually have a couple of uh, resignations. One is uh, a technicality because of license issue. Uh, the other one, uh, Trisha Stocks, we want to wish her well. Uh, her family is moving to North Carolina. Um, she's been uh, along. Uh, an employee for us for a long time in that position. We appreciate all the work over the years and wish her well on the way to North Carolina. Uh, we have some staff members in recommendation number two that have finished uh, college coursework uh, over the past year and during the summer and are moving to the next appropriate step. Um, we have a recommendation for um, accountant hire. Recommendation number four, we have our first meeting of uh, Policies, um, updates to policies. Uh, again, uh, these policies basically are matching uh, current law and current policy. Um, 
There are a couple of questions I know that we have that we want to work through before a second reading around um, the use of tobacco on school premises. So I have to make to review those pieces. Uh, recommendation number five is um, hiring um, Secretary of Administrative Assistant uh, for myself in the curriculum office, uh, as well as an educational aid uh, to replace uh, Mrs. Sucks. Recommendation number six, supplemental contracts. Uh, this obviously is not a complete list of supplemental contracts. Um, there'll be more forthcoming next month from Mrs. Kyle. Uh, recommendation number seven, we had, um, the board had approved 40 hours for staff members helping with summer school. Um, we have a few less people helping with summer school than anticipated. So uh, Claire, uh, Mrs. Sterling, Mrs. Brody, Mrs. Randolph, and Mrs. Har Mrs. Harrell, uh, all in with some extra hours that to help with summer school. So those are extra hours that we then overall we still are less hours than we anticipated. These individuals exceeded their 40, 40 hours. Uh, we have volunteers approved in number eight. Uh, classified substitutes for number nine. Harold Wage uh, correction with uh, Jimmy Harold being on second shift. I think it was originally approved for the first shift. It's exciting to see that we have field trips. Uh, so, a variety of field trips coming up, as well as uh, activities for students and the fundraising piece returning as well. Recommendation number 13 is Ohio Health Agreement uh, to provide athletic training services for us. Um, excited to have 40 hours a week uh, in that contract of uh, services that will, will give us good coverage, uh, not only doing games, but also practices uh, and extend some of that time. Uh, contractual agreement with uh, school psychologists to uh, support basically our off, uh, off campus students or, or not, not directly with full time students, but students that are still responsible for completing psychological evaluations. And recommendation number 15 is the continuation of our communication uh, consultant contract. Any questions? I have one. This recommendation number seven regarding the summer tutoring. Yes. Consistent with how we handle certain of the field trips, should that be marked with a bad Uh, it, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Is there any other questions for Mr. Smith about his recommendations tonight? Hearing none, is there any need to modify the agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? I'll second. Approve the agenda. All those in favor of approving the agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Chair, you have a vote. We have an approved agenda. Now we have several scheduled visitors listed on our agenda tonight. No, I did do some on. So we want to come back. First, first one should not be a stranger to any of us. Uh, Mr. Keith, you could come up and give us an uh, update on our uh, modern learning facility. Um, um, I will note, as, as he's going to share the, the monthly report, has already been uploaded on the website. It's available. Uh, not, not many. Uh, New pictures of things moving forward since the painful completion happened a while. Right, and I will try to keep it short and sweet. Uh, some things that are happening this week, some final wrap up things on materials or the sleeves that we've been trying to get done. The uh, outdoor learning center concrete pad is going to be completed this week. We've also got a section of sidewalk that we've actually replaced before that we're taking out and replacing again uh, to make sure that we get it right. The practice fields will be seated this week. The playground benches are due to shift or arrive this week. And if they do arrive, we'll get those installed immediately. Uh, we are working on a new issue with the county over their concern of gravel being thrown out on Northbridge Road from the new entry off of Northbridge. 
So we're working through that to try to come up with possible solutions to appease them, plus also be financially aware of how we appease them. Uh, and then we're working between the county and no dots for the solar school speed limit signs to get those and figure out which one they will both agree with. Uh, one issue we are, our team's been pretty heavily involved and also Scott and Brett, uh, is a wax issue over PK5. It's an issue, we're dealing with it right now. Um, I don't have an answer as to why we're having the issue, but we brought in the manufacturer, we brought in the forest contractor, we brought in the wax manufacturer, uh, looking for a solution. We've got some paths to go, but rest assured, we're going to make sure that it's taken care of. Outside that, um, for the project, really, we're in the finalization stage. Any punch list, remaining punch list items or issues that are coming on, our team's dealing with it, trying to get it to the contractors, get it resolved. We're uh, uh, reconciling final financials, working on closeout documentation, making sure you get all the warranties that uh, were written into the specifications, and scheduling any open training that still has to be done. And really, that's the bulk of, of what we're doing at this point. Any questions? I remember the question from Mr. Chief about the okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, next up this evening is uh, Athletic Booster representatives and uh, Capital Campaign. Um, Brian Elder and Terry Porter. Terry's actually not feeling well, so she opted to stay home this evening. But uh, Brian Elder, uh, Vice President at Park Mountain Creek, and has been uh, leading us as our, our chairman for the Capital Campaign. So, Mr. Elder. Yes, thank you. Thanks for allowing me to be here. And uh, just want to thank the board uh, for allowing the uh, boosters to create a capital campaign and rise fund and raise private funding to enhance some of the much needed athletic projects that are needed track, bleachers. If we can raise $2 million outside of what's needed from a private standpoint, we can enhance also turf scoreboard concession sandwich restrooms. I see the Friday night football games and other events, there's a uh, quarter job. So, we're really excited. Um, momentum is really building. We've kind of had a soft final phase launch. In the July, we're at 200,000 committed. In the August 425, we see here tonight over $650,000 committed to this project so far, but we still need one, one, 1. 1.4 million more. And um, I'm here to raise excitement, raise awareness. We're going to hit the campaign trail hard and try to get out to businesses. And uh, I'm happy to take any pledge of donations or questions from anyone here. We just appreciate your efforts. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous project. Obviously, there's a, a huge need. There's limited things that the district can do. And we really appreciate the boosters for stepping up and taking care of it. Thank you so much. I'm not going to make some postcards here. Yes, yes. 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 So through the end of September, both for National Bank and Air Corporation will match a dollar up to $100,000. Um, so mm -hmm. we've had a lot of great dollar amount. Dollar amount. We have about 100 people, businesses, families contributed. Not to that, add up to that 650 right now. So there's about 100 days left in 2021. We need 100 more minutes. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And uh, congratulations to the whole team. I think getting, getting to a point where they have a uh, $650,000 in pledges is, is quite the milestone. And so thank you for all your work and, and the community's work in, in helping to get there. So that's exciting. Uh, next up, uh, I've asked uh, Ron Hosser, our school resource, resource officer, uh, to give the board a few updates. Uh, I do know this summer, 
Um, we do uh, security updates at the middle school and high school, as well as obviously uh, bringing the elementary on board. Um, so we have a few things to share publicly, and then I know we need to, to go over something that's private for the library. Officer Hostel. Okay. Just uh, real quick, I'm going to on our new camera system, uh, Miles Center. Uh, same system that ODOT uses. Um, it's a fantastic system. I, I've been working on it. Uh, that's what I've seen what I can get. Uh, we've got several cameras that give us a good view of the exterior of the school. Um, we have a very good view of inside the school. Um, we're able to zoom in on certain things. Um, we've also changed the, I'm sure you guys noticed when we, when we had it all in the front lobby, we changed the front lobby around so it's a more secure area. Um, it used to be when public new schools had it on to back in 94, 96, I think. Um, not everybody was really thinking about safety and what happens in the area now. Um, the school board, the contractor, but um, they designed the entryways so that during the school hours, there's only one way in, which is through one door, and that, which has a camera system on it. Um, you have to buzz in, the only way entry to the office area. Um, if there has if there has to be an issue there, um, the administrators and the high school staff, everybody has access to all the equipment, like and spawn. When that happens, we can take care of that pretty good. Um, other than that, that's pretty much unless you guys have any other questions for me. Um, oh, I'll bring up the, uh, I guess, I'm 55 years old, so I've got a little bit of TikTok stuff. Um, some of the people I have off the TikTok, um, apparently that was a big thing. Um, we vandalized the school bathrooms, and then we picture on TikTok and expect that. Um, we had an issue with that for about two days. Um, Mr. Greger, our principal, did a fantastic job. Uh, did some investigating and uh, caught everybody involved in that. And since then, thank you very much. On the end.
Do we have any staff members that have comments on our agenda items tonight? I'm aware of it. See, so good. Now, to unscheduled visitors, and Mr. Lewis, I understand we have a, a number of uh, requests to speak with work tonight. Yes, this all yes, we got a third in the This is this this goes later. All right, we have 12 requests to speak to the group tonight, one of which is uh, not on the agenda item, but important. And uh, then we have 11 that would really, I understand it, one way or another to uh, mass COVID, birth science, any number of uh, aspects of the impact. Uh, the Therefore, policy, we have a five minute rule that I have discretion to reduce when we have this many speakers. Stop it, everybody's going to go full three minutes. So, point 40 will we'll, we'll serve as our time sequence situations such as this. And uh, I think what I'm going to do, excuse me, Mr. you also have the authority to let the students have what I would do with your permission about three when they hit three. And then you have a way to they, somehow get my first up and after whatever. I brought the other person. Yeah, I know. Especially right there. Um, and I think that's how we'll proceed. I'll, 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 I'll knock five out of three. And I know the board has the ability to extend if we need to extend. And I think that if we get there, we need to, we're probably. Yeah, but we do have to run out of time. So we do have to run out of time. I have that confidence. Also, each person can only speak once. If they want to speak again, uh, everyone else has to. Yeah, we have to speak on more than one subject. I'm just saying that's in our policy. Okay. And everybody else has to be given the opportunity to speak. So uh, we'll, we'll have speakers for three minutes. First, we're going to keep track of the time. And Christian uh, Stahl, who I spoke to on the phone at the time, who met tonight. Your name just happened to be on top. Thomas, I didn't expect to have anything. I was hoping you could be that. Good evening, North Jersey Board, parents, and visitors and staff that are here. I'm here today not solely, my name is Kristen. I'm not here today not solely because of my dislike of masks, but because of the usurping of our freedom that it represents. Millions of Americans have fought for the freedom that so many take for granted. This seemingly small infringement on our rights as Americans represents a larger way that is moving our country in a direction I do not like, and frankly, a direction that is unconstitutional. But for the sake of those who are okay with the government mandating laws and violating our god given freedoms, may I remind you that this is one of the reasons we fought the Revolutionary War. Let's discuss other reasons why masks should not be worn by children or teachers in school. I am a licensed professional counselor in the state of Ohio. I'm also certified in neurofeedback, which is a way to not invasively record brain activity, aka PG. Process it through advanced um, computer software to then make your brain aware or feed back the information to you all the while rewarding you with pleasant sounds and imagery when your brain waves change in the direction of relaxation or towards efficiency. This method has been found to be quite effective for a number of symptoms of anxiety and ADHD. With this knowledge, I also have more knowledge about the brain than the average citizen. Therefore, because of my professional expertise, I can tell you a few things that need modified for you to not only not do no harm, but to do your best for the students in this school district. Since I'm already addressing you, let me digress in order to take the opportunity to say that serving children sugary cereal and milk for breakfast is literally setting them up to fail. Not only is there very little nutritional value in that meal, it is surely not enough to keep your stomach satisfied until lunch. Additionally, it is 
to actually increasing the slow wave activity in the frontal lobes. That brainwave pattern is also the hallmark, hallmark of ADHD, specifically the attention deficit piece because it is your frontal lobes that direct executive cognitive dysfunction function, and therefore your frontal lobes that control your ability to focus. Obviously, this is a simplified explanation because the brain is amazingly complex and intricate. However, I hope you understand the idea that for kids who have no attention problems in school, you may be creating them, and for the kids who already do have an attention problem in school, you are exacerbating them. Anyway, I will go back to talking about masks. One of the biggest arguments against masks is that they obstruct the view of most of someone's face. I have heard of people arguing, even children, that this doesn't affect their socialization or ability to talk to friends. But that is an ideology, and exactly an ideology is implausible, dare I say deceptive and erroneous. Ask any social psychologist or neurologist for that matter, especially before COVID, how it would affect children to not see the faces of their classmates, teachers, or school staff, with the exception of the eyes. And they would most likely cite articles about how as social beings, children use body language, which facial, facial expression are included in everyday development. In fact, I bet that without the context of our present day COVID dilemma, some would assert that covering up the faces of children and those around children could be considered child abuse. Moreover, one of the areas of the brain that can help a child with social cues is in the posterior right side of the brain, which is right here. Do you know what else has its function there? Some of this metasensory processing, which means the integration of our, from our senses like touch, vision, and hearing. Some mathematical processing, the perception of emotions, empathy, conflict, detection, even processing spoken language and body image happens in this area. A different way to think about it is the idea that there are pathways in our brains that as we use them, they become stronger. These pathways are important. For Ms. example, Ball. it has been shown that musicians, people who rely heavily on their temporal lobes, whose primary function is auditory processing, have Ms. better Ball. memories Ms. than non musicians. We have an extension. I am wrapping up. Okay, another function of the temporal lobe is memory. So if you strengthen one area of the brain, it will also strengthen that area's other functions. Doesn't it stand to reason that the, that the inverse is also true? So if the children's right posterior is not being stimulated as it should be with facial expressions and normal social cues, do you think they will excel in math? Will they be able to integrate the information their senses are bringing in, 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 in appropriately and efficiently? Will they properly be able to develop empathy and be good citizens as adults? I would believe the answer is no. I believe putting on masks in children is stunting more than their social development. Another poem I have with masks is the covering up the essence of the human being. We've got a minute. We've got a minute to pass this. I will try to finish after other people are finished. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jendel Duffner, and I'm a local small business owner here in Alexandria. I have two children doing a 10 market, one in high school and one in middle school. On September 8th, I received an email response from Mr. Schmidt stating that the school system will be receiving $1 million from a grant called ESER 3 grant. This fund is in connection with the $4.4 billion Ohio received from the Federal Cares Act, basically the COVID grant. Mr. Schmidt continues to say that the grant is being used to strive to keep kids in class five days a week, and the guidelines to qualify for this grant is for the school must meet in-person instruction and continuing of service plans. I quote from the email, the ESER 3 funds are provided to all schools that are striving to keep kids in class for five days a week. We will receive one million in federal aid for the safe return of in-person instruction and continuing of service uh, plan. The only thing I want to correct about that is it's actually close to the 1.6 The superintendent um, claims it has nothing to do with masks and children, which is completely untrue. It has everything to do with masks and children. How do you expect to accomplish five days a week of in-person continuing service plan when you have to quarantine every
every person who comes around a sick individual can never be achieved. This is why the health department and the CDC changed the rules to say, and said, but yes, you can place masks on the kids now and they will not have to be formed. Ta-da! I do not ever remember one time in school, ever since I was a kid, the kids didn't get sick or they didn't have something going around. If we had to quarantine every person that was sick at that time, we would never have school, ever. So that goes to say, in order to accomplish getting this million, $1.6 million, the only way you're going to accomplish that is by masking the kids, because then you don't have to quarantine anybody. It doesn't matter if you're sick or not. The money, so to me, the money under this, which to me is the school board who is a, that's going to accept this money, or whoever that would be, has taken the bait like always, and now the federal government can reel you in. The school system knows there are strings attached with every grant, and they don't care. You never get a grant from the federal government without strings attached. I guarantee if the ESA 3 grant didn't exist, it, we would not be having this discussion at all. What most people don't know is the process with the ESA 3 grant is no different in the process of how Common Core and CRT got in, integrated into our school system. Yeah, right. so I take it to me. out tonight the Obama program called Race to the Top. The money was used again as a date like norm, like normal to the school system. Which more than happy the school system did. On the other side no of the line is Common Core and CRT. This mama bear is upset and disgusting, rightfully so. You're risking my children's health to sidestep up your own pockets, going against my parental rights to make medical decisions for my own child. You can go ahead and place five masks on your child. And my, it isn't my call, it isn't my kid. But you don't know who my children are. You don't work and to support my children. You don't make meals for my children. You don't comfort my children. And you don't worry one bit of where my child is on a day-to-day -day basis. You should have no right to muzzle my kids or use them as a pawn to receive your $1.6 million. Mandate. 
Because they know it's more harmful to children than it is with the virus. Which is exactly what it is with the virus because it's got to run its course. I'm going to bring up, I'm going to touch on a point you made, you know, about the, the uh, bacteria on the mask. You expel waste from your body, from feces, from urine, and from breathing. There's a reason in EMS we don't have people breathe in bags anymore because they were doing more harm than good. And now you're putting that on small children. Why is it that everyone under 18 is now wearing a mask? But I just went to a Brown team yesterday where there were 73,000 people. Ohio State football had 70,000 the other day. The week before, they had 95,000 plus or something like that. Nobody, well, I can't say nobody. Minimal mask work. I swore my first oath to the Constitution of the United States of America on July 15, 2010. And I intend to fully serve that until the day they put me six feet under it. Thank you. Part of me serving that, that oath was working downtown at the riots last year. I had bottle thrown at me, I had rock thrown at me, and there's dents in the crew that I used to drive. But you know what? COVID didn't spread down there. They weren't, there was nobody wearing masks down there. But yet here we are again. We are affecting the youth of this nation with masks. I have ADHD. My son has not been tested for ADHD because the doctor won't test because he's not old enough. I can tell you 110% that little boy has ADHD. That little boy is my world. I've arrested murderers. I've arrested rapists. I've fought for my life. But I will put everything on the line for that little man and the friends that he makes in this school district because he will continue to go to this school. But I will not, I will not stand for this. My last point, just like the, other, the, the, the lady before me said, we've never masked, we've never masked. I mean, I'm not as old as some people, I'm older than some people. Never masked, never quarantined. Last year we had 1,800 flu cases, 1,800. The previous years before we've had 32 million. What happened to all those flu numbers? Why is it that the deadliest virus that this country and this world has ever seen Yielded less deaths in America in 2020 than it did in 2017 and 2018. Yes, there were more deaths in 2017, more deaths in 2018 than there were in the year 2020. Think about that. Here you go. Hello. 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 I'm sorry. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lady Ghost. I have two children who attend Walter School, one high school and one elementary school. I love our district and the community we have. I am a graduate of Cambridge. Masking our children will not stop the virus, and contact tracing them in order to quarantine children is a direct violation of their civil liberties, their fundamental individual rights. Eight children have died with this virus in the state of Ohio. Eight, being very sad that out of 3,377,343 total children in the state, do you know how many have died with this virus in the county? Zero. A data analyst was kind enough to provide me this information, and it is blatantly clear that this virus going around does not affect children like it does the older population or the greater health risk. Kind of like the flu, which is another point I would like to make. Did you know that there are 80 communicable diseases, illnesses that are to be reported to health departments for quarantine and isolation? Did you know that one of those is the flu? The flu is a class A virus, along with SARS CoV 2. So, why have we not done this all these years with the flu? Viruses that do not go away. The flu and COVID are very similar, similar and yet here we are putting oxygen right covers over our children's mouths and noses and violating people's privacy and the rights of parents to do what they see and foster their children. 
Since the mass meeting began, I have received seven email notices for positive case numbers in elementary school. We have received one for the high school. There has been more cases since the mass meeting began, none prior. As for the high school, I would like to point out something to court that my daughter informed me of. She said that during a meeting, they were supposed to be all about planning for graduation and not come here, that they were also told not to properly wear the masks and to keep them who up during their visits. And teachers would be reporting who wore them properly and who did not so they could be traced. She also added that students were told that they were told had to wear the mask in order to keep sporting events from being disrupted due to quarantine. I can find no other word for this except origin. My final points are as follows. In dealing with the contact tracing and assistance with tracing, the face covers required for our children to wear, the quarantines, temperature checks, and last year with voluntary backs clinic on school property, I would like to remind the board that there is a particular part of the Ohio Constitution that needs to be brought to attention. Article 1, Section 21, Preservation of the Freedom to Choose Healthcare and Healthcare Coverage. It states as follows. <coughs> No federal, state, or local law or rule shall compel directly or indirectly in for any person, employer, or healthcare provider to participate in a healthcare system. And I would like to add the definition for compel is to drive or urge forcefully. A healthcare system is being defined as any public or private entity whose function includes management and processing healthcare services, healthcare data, or healthcare information for its participants. We as parents and our children are being forced to participate. And healthcare against our will. You are violating the Ohio Constitution, and in doing so, you are violating your oath that you took as a current board member, which states in part that you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. That we need to do better, our kids deserve better. For those parents who want to mask and trace it, whatever they do, I support your choice for that, but not for my kids. That's my call. Release the mask and stop quarantine now. No amount of money is worth more than health and more than your And it's my right and my right. Try that. Not you. Good evening. Trust. Leadership, communication, collaboration, accountability, integrity, trust. I think a lot of us in here felt betrayed when we got an email or just a post on Facebook that the kids will be required to wear masks. What kind of example are you setting? That was on the 6th. Numbers on the 8th of September, there were 954 active cases of COVID. That's 0.5394, a little over half of 1% of the population of Logan County. Hmm. 239 deaths. That percentage is 0 0.1351, basically about a tenth of a percent. All of these people that died from it should certainly be warned over. But the fact that these masks are going to protect anybody is wrong. You're, you're going by health departments. And all these people that are not going by scientific fact. These viruses are smaller than smoke particulates. And none of those masks that anybody in here that is wearing will stop a smoke, much less a virus particulate. So we're making children wear these masks that don't work. If you're going to mandate a mask, why don't you get all the kids virology masks with the respirators and put everybody in a hazmat suit? Or get, get them gas masks 
with biofilters, because that is the only way you're going to stop it. The worst part about it is, is that this is an age range that is least affected because those numbers, the majority of them are adults. What, like she said, one kid, not even one kid in Licking County died from it. The psychological effects of kids having to wear these masks are going to do far more damage than this virus will ever do to these kids. We are Americans. This is our school. Yes. Our tax dollars pay for this. Our tax dollars pay your salaries. And if you can't do what's right, we will vote you out. Yes. Do what's right. Thank you. Not 
in 10 days, spend seven days. Why don't we have testing? I don't know if there's a good answer for that. I want to point out too, when it comes to contact tracing, that 10% of the first 10 children in primary school were quarantined under false measures. They were not contact traced appropriately. It was one out of 10 that I know of, who was my daughter. And when I brought it to the school's attention, there wasn't even an apology for the false quarantine. So I would say that if we are going to quarantine students, we need to ensure that those students are contact traced appropriately because this isn't just excluding them from school. We're putting them on a list, on a county list where they are set they are made to stay in their homes under the order of the county. So if they are going to be quarantined, we need to make sure that it's appropriate. I understand my time's been put in, I'll wrap up here. I just want to tell people, COVID is scary, COVID is real, but this masking of the children is not for safety. If it were for safety, I'm sure that Mr. Schmidt would not have marched unmasked seniors through our primary schools last year. I'm sure that he would not have taken kids in groups to tour the new building as it's being built without masks last year when we were under mask mandate. And I am sure that if this were about safety, we would not have waited until Monday night of a holiday weekend after a PTO fundraiser to determine that the mandate needed to be in place. Give it back to the parents, please. Thank you, Ms. Key. I was uh, so spellbound by what you were having to say that I missed my uh, timekeeper's uh, signal. So, uh, <laughs> that's a bad match. That's far away. Sir, we have a uh, simulated 25 minutes to take this out. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to go beyond the 50 minutes because I expect to make some step votes as well. I'll second that. Let's go for 40 seconds by Mr. Purport to exceed the 30 minutes. I'm fully supportive. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? I pray that we sit down by saying that. All right, say vote. Motion carried by voice vote. Uh, we, will, uh, we will go past 30 minutes and uh, Mr. Cutter, Mr. Cutter, I think. I meant to start on. I didn't read it, but I know. Thank you, board, for letting me address you. Uh, what I just passed out to you in this email, I would like it to send an email to Flip Flop Caller at Gmail, and I'll be happy to send it to you. Okay. Um, what I'm amazed at is I'm not standing in front of the board of the Pickle Pickers Union 650. I'm standing in front of the board of education. To me, that represents some very poor beliefs that I have as an individual. Number one is science. Number two is math. Number three is history. What I am seeing is absolutely ridiculous for an educational institute to not acknowledge the laws and the masks and the vaccines being pushed as a primary source of control of COVID. My personal background is in accounting, it is in business, and it is in finance. It is also in data analytics, which includes hospital, healthcare industry, many years. I've worked in numbers, I understand data, I understand how to get information, and I did it for hospitals for a very long time. My number one concern when COVID started was that the information and the data was not being reported correctly. We start with the deaths. 2.6 comorbidities per death for every COVID death. That means that an individual who tested positive after an April crash, after getting any other numerous diseases, is being lumped into a total of deaths. To get to that perspective, I worked with a food program in Ohio Health. Okay. If I were to take the same metrics of COVID deaths and apply it to the flu program, which I did in front of board meetings with doctors, 
the numbers would be four to five times higher than this. This is ridiculous, guys. Unfortunately, you're getting the brunt of this because we have a major issue in this country. It's called censorship. Yes. Yeah. By a show of hands, if I can ask the board, has anyone here seen any censorship related to COVID-19 information? Just, just an acknowledgement if you've seen it. I'm not asking anything else. We have one. Has anyone out here seen any censorship? <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, pushing things like vaccines, Scott, you, God bless you, I know you're put in a tough spot here, Bob, but I gotta tell you something, you're pushing vaccines a lot, especially on kids lately. How many deaths have taken place because of vaccines so far in this country of COVID-19? Any idea? Okay. It's at least 15,000 acknowledged. All right. This is a new experimental vaccine. <clears throat> I don't appreciate you making recommendations about vaccines and kids and encouraging them to take it. That should not happen. To sum things up here, I would hope that the Board of Education lacks the qualifications, the skills, to recognize what was just admitted here was censorship, but one, addressing that and guaranteeing that we're not being fed crap. And it's very simple to do. If you're getting pushed from the Lincoln County Health Department about certain things, ask them to provide the evidence. How efficient is that mask you're all wearing on your face right now? If you can't answer that single quick answer, percentage wise, you've got a major problem. Collaboration. The jig is up, guys. We're not asking for anything other than to respect the community that you're in, number one. And number two, use common sense. The least affected group is kids. It's known. Flu is way worse on our kids. Okay? We need to use common sense here. And as far as quarantine goes, this is my last comment. I'll I'll be done. A, symmetric, symmetric spread of the virus does not occur. That's not an opinion, that's not a guess, that's a fact. The only reason you should quarantine anybody is if they show symptoms. Okay? You guys are fighting your own science, which is ridiculous. If you guys need help on any of those studies I just prepared, by the way, just for reference, Within those studies I prepared for you, I can send it to you electronically with all cited sources. It references over 50 mass studies. If you dig deeper into it, it will reference over 100 mass studies. Mass has been around for 100 years. Go ask the coal miners how much they like mass. Okay? This is serious stuff, guys. This isn't a game. This isn't politics. This is our kids. Thank you. And this fellow, Tiffany Nova. Hello, my name is Tiffany Nova. I am teaching kids in the district that are fifth grade tonight and a first grader who is at home. Um, I'm going to, I've been really prepared to talk about this. I'm just going to bring a couple things up just to put out on the numbers and signs or anything like that. But what I am going to tell you is that. Um, that's my daughter, and she's sitting down with her mask on, to which she frequently cries about because she doesn't like wearing that mask. She has asthma, and that mask doesn't help her breathe at all during the day. She's at school. And it's the first thing that comes off her face that she gets off the bus in the afternoon. The day that you sent the email, I had to tell my kids that they had to go to school the next day with their masks on, even though they know their mom doesn't wear a mask. And I'm only wearing them right now because of what you said. Which I also try to teach my daughter to be respectful to her beliefs. But as I was even talking, my glasses fall up, which is what happens to my six year old first grade if you can't to the board to learn during the day. Um, so, what I'm asking you to do is to let me be your parent because you don't know her. You don't know that a day before she actually gets sick, her breath changes, and I can tell she's getting sick. 
You don't know that a day before she has an asthma attack, she'll tell me, I can't really breathe, right, Mom? You don't know her, right? And I do. And I know that she's not comfortable in that mask when she comes to school. Um, secondly, I didn't know anything about the tax stuff. I, I was pretty ignorant to that, I guess. I was unaware that we were receiving money for that. And if that is true, my question to you is if this is a money thing, um, we push a levy six times because we didn't want to take some funding because we didn't want them to tell us how to go about this. Yeah. We fought really hard to do what we wanted to do for this building. And right now, if that's why we're maxing our kids is because of numbers or money, it's not a good enough reason. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Noble.
that he hates wearing the mask, he doesn't feel good wearing it. How are you going to get a good education when you go to school and you're wearing a mask that you don't feel good wearing and you get a headache every day? Everybody's already commented and people have spoke about different things and everything is valid. You guys know this is wrong. And you sit up there with your mask on, like it's helping, it's not. And you want to mask our children. Vote on this, let us know where you stand, and let's stop doing this. It's about money. Because it sure isn't about health. We all know that. And the treasurer can probably speak to where the money's going. Are your uh, meetings for treasury, are they still the second Wednesday of each month? Yes, ma'am. And is that held in the trailer? So yes. the trailers? Open to the public. Open to the public, yeah. Oh. Um, the contact tracing and quarantining in this school is a joke. Yeah. You know, as my daughter spoke, the principal could not even answer her questions. And all she could do was say, I'm sorry, I'm overwhelmed. I can't sleep at night. How worried. The kids all need to wear masks. Well, that was the whole thing. It was bait and switch on all of us out here. Because after your first board meeting, you gave us all the impression, as you did in your bullet, that it was up to the parents where it should reside. Yeah. But then as soon as we get into school, just a little bit, and nobody could put their name in to run for education, Board of Education member, because you bait and switched us. Don't think that we won't remember who stands with us and who doesn't. This is our school, our community. And I've told you before, in females and in person, this is abuse of our children. People are not going to stand for it. And there are some of us here tonight that as more and more people get wind of what's going on with you guys, and what's going on at the school, we're all going to be in here because nobody wants their kid to be this way. And, I, and I've sent multiple emails, Mr. Smith cannot even answer an email straight, vaguely, general, or not at all. I ask you in the email, what is temporary? You have no benchmarks, no goals, unless it's all about the money because it's not helpful. The school board needs to take a vote. Like Ms. Vance can talk. Uh, good evening. I uh, begin my speech here with uh, just a small history lesson on July 4th, 1776. The United States of America won their freedom from the monarch of the time, King George III. We, the United States of America, were finally free and independent, not being ruled by the government that told their people how to live that self-governed by the leadership of our forefathers who actually understood this principle and laid the foundation of the greatest nation the world has ever seen. Why? We were given the freedom to govern ourselves and we were one nation under God, capital G. But did we know that the Revolutionary War was fought during the time of the smallpox uh, epidemic? Did we realize just in the 20th century alone that over 300 million people have died of smallpox? And the death rate that contacted this virus was 30%. So we won a war during a time when smallpox was wreaking havoc on our population. But what was the difference? We stood united and strong and we won our freedom and flew the American flag proudly. So why do I believe masks aren't working? First, Americans are getting sick, and yes, even those who are wearing masks. Just a short time ago, a year and a half, that we are keeping track, the United States of America has fallen into a complete uh, place in the state of being told what to do, and it's just being okay with that. In school, I was an okay student. I graduated high school with a 3.9, undergrad with a 3.4, and a graduate degree with a 3.8. Man, I yearned for a 99.75% in all my classes, but that was hard to do, and an awesome grade, we can all agree. However, that is what we are faced with today, a 99.75% recovery rate from COVID-19. Yes. So to make this recovery rate even better, let's put the masks on people. The fact
fact is, people are getting sick and masks aren't the answer. Look on the box of a hospital mask that our doctors wear. On the warning label, it states that these will not protect you from contracting COVID-19. So your homemade masks or the ones you are buying online that we wear and that our kids wear that are maybe washed every once a week and are touched by our dirty hands thousands of times a day, I guarantee you are even worse. I just cannot believe we are allowing children to wear masks and breathe in their own crap all day, every day. I know for a fact we are doing more harm to their bodies by strapping these things with their faces than letting their good old immune systems do what they were supposed to do. But no, we want them to be sucking in carbon dioxide, whatever's on their hands, and just nasty this all day long. Americans are still getting sick, and yes, even wearing masks. Why? Because we are talking about a respiratory virus that is spreading aerosol particles that can penetrate any mask. If you can smell a hamburger or pizza joint while walking down the street or into a restaurant with a mask on, then trust me, it will not stop the virus from entering your mask. Along with the flu virus, COVID-19 has an animal reservoir, which simply means animals can also pick up this same virus, carry it around with them. So unless we are masking up animals and giving them a shot, which I'll explain won't work either, the spread will continue. A respiratory virus, just like the flu, which has magically disappeared, will find ways to form itself and continue affecting people. We are losing our independence that we fought for almost, for almost 250 years ago over a respiratory virus that won't let up. Like the food shop, we would run out and get every fall before COVID came along. Some who got the food shop would actually get the flu. The same thing is happening today. Why? Because of different variances. Nothing has changed in mass will not be our saving grace, nor this vaccine. They are only a hindrance, a sign of tyranny, tools used for stopping kids from picking up on very crucial social fuel cues from their teachers and peers. If you haven't figured it out, COVID is just a cover-up to the evil that is working behind the scenes yeah. and a fascist movement to set up a socialistic government where the people were violent government to make decisions for them. Which is the very thing we fought against 250 years ago. Mr. Stahl, you're still be on board. Yep, I will uh, wrap it up here. Okay. Uh, I was going to talk about turning on your TVs, taking social media pro, uh, profiles and platforms because you're being lied to. Um, but I, I, I want to wrap up with this. I've been up here ranting about our individual freedom and you being able to make your own mind up and choose what's best for you. If you believe a mask is the answer, that is your decision. I'll respect it, even if I believe you are dead wrong and vice versa. In the end, it should be your decision. Yeah. Your decision. Yeah. Yeah. Money, power, and control. That's what, we, that's what we are facing. And we as American people better stand up for our rights before they are completely stripped from us. And that red, white, and blue that waves so proudly in the air, out in our front yards, waves bye-bye to what those soldiers valiantly fought for. Our independence and our freedom, July 4th, 1776, they would never forget. Thank you, Mr. Stahl. Ms. Governor, I think you indicated you have something else, some other topic you need to address. Yes. Is, it, is it something on our agenda? Um, I want to address the board's decision that Joe knows about here that happened in August of 2020. That's clearly not on our What's that? I'm, I'm interested. No. Yeah. It, that'll, that'll, go, excuse me, that'll, that'll, that'll fit in our later session of our, of our, our meeting where we deal with comments related to things not on our agenda. Uh, we, we've already exceeded time. Everybody else has more they wanted to say, too. So. I'd like to hear it. 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 I already moved beyond the amount of time we would normally allot to this. It's important. Well, I'm going to move this approach. Uh, and 
and, and, and so we want to find on matters related to the other. If we need to move on. That's, that's the whole word. Anyone I my my board members are not shy about making motions for the for the care. Yes.
So I'm saying if my son is in positive con in, in contact with somebody that tested positive, and he comes home and he lives with another child in my house that we don't wear masks at home, neither of them are showing symptoms, does the other child get to go to school? Yes. Why? That makes no sense to me because he could potentially be asymptomatic and the other child could be asymptomatic and still go to school. And still First right. slide. And so slide. Yes. Okay. I don't I'm not, I guess I would be okay if it made sense. And it doesn't make sense. We don't administer the quarantine. The quarantine is administered by the health department. Well, not many of you know, actually, none of you know. My husband and I both contracted the quarantine and we both had negative tests. Right. And so we had to go to quarantine. Why? Because we both work in public service. So why are these numbers being fudged? I mean, we both had to stay in our house for 17 days. Our kid had to be quarantined away from us. And nobody in this entire county knew that two people that's a problem for Rubella that was supposedly non existent. We both have been vaccinated for Rubella multiple times. I was in the military, so I'm sure they injected with multiple things, and I have no idea what. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't get it. If you could make it make sense to me, I wouldn't be so worked up and wouldn't be here today. Make it please. That's what I have to say. Does anybody else have that question? Do you want to do it? I want to add something. No guarantee you will answer it, but you're welcome to ask. I want to add something. What's more than the superintendent? How do you know what the parents in this district want? We started the school year with the parents choosing, as you told us. And those parents chose. Do they all have to file in this room before you guys will take notes? It's not like you don't know what the parents want. You know. So I don't. And it's just completely right. My, grand, my granddaughter was quarantined. She's got a little brother that goes to school too. He wasn't. And you can get two times, once last year and once over at this year. Now, how is that scientific? And you want us all to sit out here and go like both on sheet like this. <laughs> no, we are smarter than that. Mr. Smith, you know what the parents want. You saw how everybody came to school when it was their choice to, to, to do what they thought was best for their kids. Do you think they didn't think about the consequences? That they're not smart enough to know the risk and reward or what's best for their kid when you know better? No, you don't. So I just wanted to remind the board that you already know what the parents want. This is our district. No matter how much some of you up there might want to change into something else that we don't want it to be, you already know what everybody wants. So I would like to see the board take a vote on parents' choice when it comes to this matter. So we know. I don't see, I don't see what the whole that is on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're going to move on to the meeting now to see about the rest of this webinar. And that takes us to I've got a comment here. Mr. Purple and make a comment. No. But I will say, we are going to have a session. We are going to have a session with Mr. Smith's COVID update. And that might be a better place for it. But go ahead. I, I, I think right now is the best time to say that. Mm -hmm. All the students, it's mandated to wear a mask. But if it's so good, why aren't the football players mandated to wear yeah! a mask?
uh, training in the area of uh, CPM, which is the College Preparatory Mathematics Program, uh, collaborating with one, one another as well as our support staff uh, and getting our students to navigate in the thinking of mathematics um, rather than, than just the, in, in addition to just the other things. Um, so we're trying to apply as well. A few highlights at the uh, high school. Um, the high school has been working on updating the high school seal option and we're going to be uh, presenting that to the Academic Excellence Committee uh, Wednesday evening. Um, homecoming was last week, uh, a big success from that. Uh, um, and seeing seem that the events were well attended and before the um, a couple of other things to highlight for students are working right now. This is always cross uh, age uh, tutoring class and mentoring. We've been working with elementary students in the morning. Uh, we've had some pictures and things we've shared with that. And I hope to have uh, some first students in the future address the board and do a short presentation. Um, another piece in this area class, service learning class, uh, working with out in the community and do different sort of service learning opportunities. Uh, they have had opportunity to visit the new um, nursing home in Johnstown, uh, do some craft activities and education with uh, the residents there. Um, and they are currently working towards a goal for the National Day of Service, which is in October, um, to do some landscaping at the elementary building and actually transplant some of the, the landscaping that's. Uh, then donated and started with the primary and moved back to the new elementary um, so Those are kind of the, the highlights um, from special education. A lot of additional um, training going on as, as we're working to support uh, curriculum and respond to uh, data. Uh, instructional services, you know that we expanded services that are available and opportunities there for particularly students this year. Uh, right now, one of those areas is uh, increased opportunity for, for writing. We've been doing some beginning of the year benchmark uh, writing with those students in K-8. Um, and uh, looking forward to sharing that progress with them uh, for the future have some students share, share progress. Uh, technology, uh, quite a heavy lift in getting the new building open, open, but things are going well. Uh, training taking place for the new technology we go with the other touch system, uh, fine tuning the paging system, and uh, working through some of those pieces. Uh, we are watching the video security um, and then updating Chromebooks and, and From a food service standpoint, um, we have uh, seen an increase in students participating in both breakfast and lunch. Um, again, for this year, um, uh, lunch and breakfast is uh, free to all students through the federal government. Uh, it is still important that we've seen some things here in September, beginning of October, uh, asking families to still fill out uh, free reduced applications if they apply. If, if they believe they would qualify for the free reduce. Um, two things for that. One of that is because that carries over to the first 60 days of the following school year. So if you want to have a smooth start next year, it makes sense to have that information now to carry over to, to next year. Um, the other piece is um, there are different reporting requirements uh, as far as how students are doing their standardized tests that are tied to uh, the number of economically disadvantaged students, um, as well as the proposed new uh, current school funding model, as well as the new funding model, is attached on that. Um, as far as title services, uh, we support a couple of teachers through the, the title one, um, and that's dependent on the number of disadvantaged. So, uh, two reasons one, to support families for the start of next year, uh, two, so that we can. Uh, um, maintenance has been extremely busy, excited. Oh, yes, that is important. So, um, we're probably continuously more updates uh, 
as far as cafeteria menu and changes in the menu. Um, the supply chain, there's the supply chain is broken. And so uh, even though the um, Ms. Lewis and food service department are ordering so how four weeks in advance, a lot of things on the order are, are not to be filled. Um, and, and it kind of changes from, from week to week. So um, plastic or that plastic wear and, and disposable plates seem to be the current issue. Um, at one point it's chicken products. Um, it just it's it's just yeah, peanut butter and jelly is the same as this for issue at one point. So um, just know that if there are changes in the lunch menu. Because of a supply chain issue. But have been able to get to it. We have still been able to get to it. We have still been able to get to it. We have still been able to get to it. Yes. Maintenance staff continues working extremely hard. Excited to welcome. Uh, Sean on board, as well as uh, Jim, part time uh, working with the elementary. Um, and you also notice uh, part, of, part of some work that's going to be done in the summer, a little too wet this summer, so it's happening now, but the clearing of some of the, the trees, um, not trees, clearing of the debris and undergrowth amongst the trees uh, in the entrance area. Uh, by the baseball stadium uh, as well as drive back to the home. So I'll be able to continue. But there's no way it's very good. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Now that takes us to uh, your uh, discussion items. Okay. My first discussion item was COVID operations. Um, a few things. First of all, thank you to, to the community members that are here tonight. Um, we we are doing our best to, to work through this, and I think it's important to, to recognize that. Um, we knew that there was community, um, that there were members of the community that were upset that wanted to speak tonight. Uh, it would have been very easy for us to not include any COVID operation on our floor agenda and have her wait to the end of the evening. Uh, we thought that it was important to, to give you that voice and, and give you that opportunity. Oh, I tried to take notes. Should we be thankful? Is that what you're saying? Really? I tried to take notes during. You're not your best. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to work through a few of the things, our notes, um, notes that I took this evening. And, and kind of get an update of where we are and why. I understand that we're trying to make sense of where we currently are, and that's a challenging piece because information is changing daily, and there are a variety of sources of information out there. We are working, you know, I'm going to ask for your professionalism. We listened to you for 45 minutes. We did not make snarky comments when you were speaking. We did not make facial expressions. We didn't whisper to our neighbors. I'm just asking for professionalism as we're working through this situation. Thank you. Making sense of this is difficult. We all come to it with different information. And we all have the same intent of doing what's best for our kids. We're not always going to agree on everything. A few things that I wanted to, to make sure I touched on um, in response to some of the things we heard. Today. So it is correct that we are receiving um, ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 funds from the federal government. Uh, which are intended to allow us um, to focus on instructional strategies, getting working with students considering the last 18 months have been uh, less than ideal moving students forward academically. There is no um, assumptions or requirements in that that require a master's. 
So while I understand how you may think that, I want to be clear for the record that that is not required. And, and when you search that piece out, what is required is that we're working to provide students quality instruction in getting kids back into the world. There were many districts across the United States um, who had no students in the building to fall last year. Um, the, the goals around returning to safe school and getting kids in school, what it, were the requirements? We were able to address that by saying we were hybrid until March, we returned in March, and we continue to have all, we are planning to continue to have all students in the building this year. Um, that, was, that was the only uh, requirement as far as uh, safety protocols. So there are no, there are no mask requirements. Um, so then clarify, as we just, are, could you clarify that when you're doing the next year? Because it sounds like you're the ones making the decision and it's not coming from anyone else. Because we know the government can't, we don't make recommendations. So it sounds like the school is making the recommendations for the kids that are back, which parents they do not want. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that piece. I just speaking specifically to the answer from the comments that were made about receiving funding because they're requiring students to wear masks. That is absolutely false. That's not. That's so, not. So, 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 just, just to make sure it's all clear, that what, I, what I'm understanding and, and what um, Ms. Duffner was indicating was that she wasn't saying that we were we were required by the law to require masks, but rather. The practical matter under the under that law, her understanding seemed to be that we had to have kids in school five days a week, or else we risk losing that funding. And what I think I'm hearing you say is we won't, we aren't risk of losing the funding. All we had to have is a plan to have the kids in school. Am I right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So we are we are not we are not at risk. We are not at risk of losing any of the answer two or the answer three funding. Um, no, we have. Okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get your your kind of combined. I just I just want to be perfectly clear. I'm gonna to get to that piece. I want to be perfectly clear that there is that us receiving SO2 or SO3 funding is not directly tied to having kids math or not having kids quarantine. Are you doing it indirectly? No, there's no indirect. No, we. We have to put together a continuity of service plan. We have to share what our plan was for educating students. So our plan was to have kids return five days a week. It doesn't have to be every student every day. Parents and students, the money, the money covers. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to work through. But let me let me say one other thing. The past five years of I have worked very hard to be transparent, to understand people's concerns, um, and, and to work to move this district forward um, on a greater, you know, greater good of the whole community. This has not been a fun 18 months, and no one has wanted to create these headaches. Ask yourself why, because I'm going to be clear, the masks are not tied to funding. Ask yourself why would I be putting this on myself, right? Because it was it was where we are in deciding that hey, it is time for us to make a temporary change and have the kids wear masks. Because I can see across the state and across other districts where classrooms are getting quarantined, classrooms are getting shut down, buildings are getting shut down. That is not good for the kids either. It just isn't. For my own students. What? Like what? Like 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 science. It's science. 
Science. Mr. Todd, please. Let, let Mr. Schmidt finish. Can you interrupt you when we're speaking, sir? Show us the same thing, sir. Mr. Schmidt, please continue. You don't have anything to say, Mr. Todd? I would like to say more about the government. When we saw when we saw classrooms across the county as well as across the state, classrooms and districts that were shutting down, canceling things because of an uptick in cases as well as ridiculous number of quarantines. There was a short-term measure that we could put in place to try and avoid that. It is short-term, it is temporary. Will you stop interrupting? He has yet to answer that question. But it's short term. I've been asked that several times. Maybe he can answer it. Pay your salaries. I don't have much of a We show up here. We ask questions. We should get answers. Sir, I get $125 a move. And I don't get a wrong meeting because we don't have to pay for all the money. You know, I'm standing right here. I can't. So she can take the mask off because you're 20 feet away from us, and then we can actually. Mr. Smith, please continue. Please stop. This is a gentleman over here having worn a mask properly all night. I asked that often because I had to do some protests. Yeah, ridiculous rules of wearing a mask at work. That's not a for that. It's not. That's the I'll, I'll, I'll share one. I'll share one last statement. I have, I have multiple other things to share, but I just don't think that it. Uh, I don't think it's beneficial at this point. You need to understand that the reason that we decided to have students wear masks was so that we could stop the large number of quarantines. Prove that they were. So, that's not true. Just the trial. Please come over. I would like to hear what he has to say. Well, if you would say something instead of talking in circles, it'd be helpful. It was not easy last year to have not have all those students here every day. That weighs heavily on my shoulders. We started school a week and a half to two weeks behind most of the other districts in the state. And a lot of that is because of the Hartford Fair and our community has said, we would like a week to relax after the Hartford Fair because that's an exhausting week. So we start a little bit later. It gives us a glimpse into what's happening in other districts. I did not want to be in a position of the second week of school, having to tell a first grade classroom, I'm sorry, you have to go home for 10 days, or shutting down a high school for 10 days, like Whipping Valley had to, or canceling the football game because of the number of quarantines. That doesn't make any sense. It, the reason we are wearing masks and the reason I asked our students to temporarily wear masks is so we can stop the quarantine numbers and keep kids in school. We are working to collect local data in real time, share that amongst districts, advocate with the health department, who then advocates with the other health departments and the state level agencies to change some of these very oppressive and restrictive guidelines that we are under. I am trying to get us out of this. But if I'm dealing with 100, 150, 200 kids at home, that's not good for them either. No one likes wearing a mask, myself included. The students don't like it, but for the most part, they are trying to be understanding and they are doing their best. And we appreciate that. And it's much better having kids in school than it is having kids at home for no reason. As we're throwing facts around, Kids who have been quarantined, we have about 3% of 
of those students quarantined who uh, later become positive. When you really zero in and you try in real time to track that information, it's less than about one and a half percent that we think are connected to a potential school case. Meaning that the other one and a half that gets sick, it's because they, you know, it's it's because someone in some of their other circles was also sick. So it's it's not that exact piece. Regardless, it's a very small number. And so our argument has been, why do we have to keep quarantining all these kids? We need to change these procedures. That's what we're working on. That's what we're advocating for. Those are the conversations that we're having with us. Do you see the site for that? Do you see progress? I, I do see end in sight. I do see changes happening. Our health department understands that, and our health department is seeing that across other districts and is, is fighting for that as well. You can bring up the health department. If there's something updated, please, I'll leave forever. <coughs> August 16, 2021, underneath the max, the last sentence in this paragraph says parents will decide if their children wear, if their child wear that mask. That is from the Lincoln County Health Department. Their COVID 19 guidance for Lincoln County Schools, August 16, 2020. Yep. If there's something updated, please let me know. If not, please follow the Lincoln County Health Department. Back. So we have our local, we have our local policies. And again, it wasn't it wasn't a decision that I wanted to make because I thought it would be good to have kids wear masks. It was a decision made. So that we can keep kids in school and not have to quarantine large numbers. When you and, and we've also been very transparent from the beginning as far as reporting those quarantine numbers. That's not a required piece, but we thought it was important to share. If you look at if you look at um, other districts, not everyone has has shared that information. As we've been talking, there are some schools right now dealing with a large number of kids. Quarantine out of class, and that's not good. I'm asking, I'm asking that you understand we are trying to work through the process. It's it is also important that we're that we're following expectations, guidelines, policies, and not putting the district at risk for not following um, those things. What risk do we have? So we, I, I believe 
I guess here are my final comments and we'll wrap it up this point. I believe that it should be a parent right. I also believe that the school district has an obligation to do their best to educate all students. And I could see the trends happening in other districts that we were going to be quarantining large number of kids and or having to shut down classrooms in, in following current guidelines around quarantine. So a temporary measure was let's wear masks so we don't have to quarantine and, and we are fighting the quarantine procedures that don't make sense. Things have evolved over time and they're going to continue to evolve over time. I need you to know that we are fighting and pushing for this because we want kids in school not wearing masks. Here. And Mr. Smith, let me follow up. And we talked about this being a temporary measure. Earlier, Mrs. Vance mentioned that, that, that she was interested in what temporary means. How, how are you going to administer this temporary measure? Are you going to decide when to stop? So where, where we are right now with uh, numbers is we continue to have more today alone we have five middle school and or high school students who tested positive if those numbers continue to climb then then our quarantine numbers will continue to climb if those, our quarantine numbers won't climb exactly which is so it, as long as as long as those positive cases continue to climb then then I, I believe that the best choice is to continue to wear a mask short term. Otherwise, we're going to end up for, for every kid that is positive, we end up somewhere between six to nine students that potentially are quarantined because of that. And we've already shared that less than one and a half percent of those kids will actually probably get sick. So there's no need to quarantine all those students. It puts the district at a liability if we're, if we were not following through. What well, liabilities? So you're violating the written term of health department guidelines. No. What? That's a good thing. What are you liable for that? But I don't want to see what the operating numbers are. Not to be honest. I need to know. I need to know. Excuse me, Mr. Gibson. I need to know. I need to ask that. That, that question in her, in her excellent remarks. And I want to I want to find out the answer to why it is that we're contracting that we're contract tracing. I, I don't I don't know why we have to participate. But no, they seem to think we have to. That doesn't mean we have to. And so what I want to do is I want to run that down. But I don't have the an answer. But Mr. Smith talks to them all the time, but I've asked this question in the last meeting. And I had it in my emails to you guys in the last school year, and he still has the answer. You said in the last meeting that you talked to the health department, and you my health department all the time. I asked you this question. You didn't come up with an answer. Your only thing that you said was, well, I guess it's because they all have from the health box. But you don't have the answers. There's no more seen that I'm aware of. Now keep my mouth and to me. You all have my email address. But there is nothing that legally reminds you. So when you talk about liabilities, what liabilities? There's no legal thing for this. The state can't mandate, the county can't mandate, and there's no hard ORC that I know of in Lincoln County that I know of that Lincoln County is using to push their arms. So I guess you throw around these terms. You don't want to talk about anything, you want to be professional. But you can't answer the questions. This is why people are frustrated. Ms. Ben, we're going to get an answer to that question. I have a question that gets part of that, I think. Um, what is the reason that uh, the principal send out the COVID notification of every day or what, whenever it happens? I'm not sure when we have COVID notification. Maybe you do. When a positive case is like yeah. when a five. Well, what's so, the point of that? Why do you think that? Well, that's too simple. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I guess so, so we are we are required to to notify when a positive case has been identified in the school. 
um, that was passed in legislation as far as as that requirement piece um, in an effort to be transparent so that schools are hiding that information from parents. Yes. And so we're also required to do the dashboard to report on the dashboard how many positive cases we have. Um, that can be required to be reported as just one number of how many cases you have in the district. We break it down to report it by, by each bill. Um, but though the, I, I don't have the, the exact requirement or reference in that requirement, but we're required to, to do that. What we have shifted to and to give the communication out that the dashboard, we, we gotten clarification that the dashboard is enough to identify a district-wide notice. And so we'll be communicating with parents that, hey, from a district-wide, if you want to see what's happening district-wide, check out the dashboard. We're still required to, to communicate on an individual classroom if there is a case within an individual classroom. So those individual notices will be coming out. Um, that would be a bit of a change for high school because in high school in the past, we've just done the building wide notice and haven't done individual classrooms. But um, because it, it's it's getting to be, we, we don't want to be as honest about it, but at the same time, we don't want it to be not transparent about it because this, uh, that's, same, that's just the same. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing that happens when we have uh, headlights, we send a notice home to that classroom. That, 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 that right. So the building, so the building information is just going to be on the website. The website. No. Yep. That's great. Yep. This is Vince. Yeah, um, I actually want to see as well. I'm sure everybody was asked. And they were also quarantined. Over 400. Yeah, everywhere. And um, we asked what was different between this year and last year. Because now if, you're, if you wore a mask, it would be mask everyone. So one size is all. But now, if you don't wear a mask, you don't have to be quarantined. You didn't have an answer in the last season. Because we were following that flow with you guys, the flow chart this morning. And you said you were going to get the Lake County Health Department. How do you got with them and not send the answer to that question? So the difference between last year and the last year they were quarantined, and this yep. year they, they say mass, they don't have quarantine, but scientifically yeah. it's so I, I think we addressed that last week or the last time that I, I apologize. So the, the change is those, those were the guidelines, those, those were the requirements that we were under at that time because they were they were mandates at that time. The health department and the state level recognized that hey. We, we need to prioritize some things to keep kids in school. And so that's the relaxed uh, changes for this year so that kids can stay in school. That makes sense to you? Because I, didn't, I yeah. that did not make any sense of what you just said to me. Uh, I think we've learned, I think we've learned, I think we've learned a long way and working to make adjustments as, as we learn more. Yeah. Can you sign that one more time? Does that not make sense? Yeah, it's somewhat negative. I have one. I mean, I have one. I'm not going to be able to understand the current quarantine rule. How it makes sense. Based on everything I've heard up until now, I always thought that they said that the mask protects other people. And so I never, I'm not saying that that's right. I'm saying that's what they've always said. So now, all of a sudden, somebody's wearing a mask that's supposed to protect somebody else, and that is the thing that, that keeps them from being quarantined. Now, as Mr. Smith indicated, we're not seeing the quarantine numbers anyway, 
And so we're trying to work through a huge bureaucracy here. And we're going to get an answer to, to, to exactly how it is they hold their feet on the bar by talking about water. When it's temporary, when it's temporary, I still am talking in circles with the temporary. I'm not talking in circles as far as temporary. So temporary as as long as our as long as our COVID cases of positive students continue to increase. They, they are extremely they are extremely different than last year in the fact that we have a significant number of significant more students testing positive with COVID this year already this year than we did all of last year. But they're wearing masks and the numbers go up. Wouldn't that tell you that the masks aren't doing what they're supposed to do? Which makes it pointless to wear them anyways. So we're talking about a small portion of the day when kids are at school, not not counting all the other interactions that they have and where else they can contract COVID. Because we know that in general, someone pointed out, you know, we, we see when people are out and about, they're not wearing wearing masks. I have never said, nor do I believe that masks are the answer. The point is. I want kids to be in school. Oh, I have not have an issue. My son, that is an honorable student, has been through all of his school. He's now a sophomore this year. He wants to drop out. And I'm going to stand up right here in front of everybody and let you all know because I'm about to walk out here. You have all let my son down. I have a daughter that's following behind him. And if either one of those two kids drop out, all of you fail. All of you. I hope you're proud of yourselves. You're not serving, you're not serving the people. This is a public school. We pay for the school. And you're running it like a dictatorship of a flawed science. Quit believing the lie. Does the board does the board have any questions about like that? The board should have a whole lot more questions. Why is there one is there the truth? What did the account what did the current number take? And what's the trend? We are, we are continuing to trend upward right now. We were at two cases, two cases, then five cases, 11 cases. Last week we were at 14 cases. Um, today we have five cases reported uh, from the middle school, high school level. I don't have that right now. Today is 14, I mean, 19. Um, so those are individual meetings. Those are individual meetings. It's not a, it's not, that's not a perception. It's not a rolling It's not a rolling They come back after the right. yeah. right now. So this week so far, we have five. Last week, we had 14. So far, this week, we have five. Most of those are the older high school, middle school. We, we have had cases preschool through, through high school. Actually, um, which prior weeks the cases have been primarily at the elementary, but just a couple at the middle school. Um, now, now we're starting to see some middle school, middle school. What's ex other, what's the experience of, of neighboring or uh, other school districts? You've been in, in school two as much as a week and a half longer than you now. Are there trends going down, up? Do you know? So uh, everyone's trend is going up right now, um, but that's relative to, to where they were in the past. So um, out of uh, the districts in, in Lincoln County, um, we are fourth in number of cases um, per when, when you figure the ratio appropriate to uh, population. So um, there are three districts that have more cases than us. Uh, per rate of 10,000 uh, residents. And um, when you look at, so, and that's the school, that's 
that school split. So we're we are fourth highest on school level. Yes. Are there any are there any buildings closed right now? I know Lickin, Lickin Valley High School closed for a couple of weeks. Uh, we need middle school closed their sixth grade for the young people staff. Do you know of any others? Yeah, Southwest Lickin has had uh, classrooms that are closed. Individual classrooms. Yes. Yeah. Lickin Valley has has as well. <coughs> the good news is when you look at Larger community, um, we are in the bottom third as far as number of cases in the community. So that is that is good news because we've seen before where community cases typically lead to increased community cases, community cases typically increase to increase school cases. So um, it, you know it's it's good that as a community we're in. That lower pressure. Right. But right now, the school is as a health department passed out a COVID guidance. I remember the uh, communicating to the report, or at least to me, that they were looking to possibly modify some of the guidance that they've done that day. So they, they are working through modifying their guidance. Um, they have proposals for their for their board. There's nothing that's come out yet, um, but they're Again, like I shared earlier, we're, we're advocating for that change. We're presenting um, the quarantines, you know, information that we have. In fact, that it is it is not it is not necessary. So, the, just so I understand, their their goal is to make the quarantine rules less onerous, less restrictive. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. As far as so, Johnstown is strongly encouraging and asking for compliance with wearing masks. Um, and they are uh, in the bottom, bottom fourth of districts right now with cases. They haven't expressed that with their parents. And they have not expressed an in interest in masks to their parents. They, they said they're not going to get political and they're not going to take the children's health and wellness in school board tickets. I have, she has an email on her phone to their school board. Well, my grandson goes to Johnstown kindergarten. So I know too well what's going on with it. I know we're sad as far as the number goes, which is down at the bottom end of things without wearing a mask. I know, I do know that the teachers, some of them are, only because one of our friends has a very young daughter who is having a hard time understanding muscle masks. Yeah. And so she has been asking to wear a mask and she's 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 been asking to wear a mask and I said the the superintendent had asked and encouraged families to, to please wear masks. Right, right. So what, what I'm saying is that, that was not that message was not related to the parents because our friends have not gotten emails from the school that says we encourage or suggest or expect or mandate or whatever ambiguous term you want to throw right. out there. They haven't, and they haven't got that. The message that you're referring to is the message that was sent out prior to school. There's, I am under, I, I am not a resident in Johnson. I live in Alexander. I, have, I don't know if the parents, I don't have kids there, so I don't know if the parents got that message. That's what I was told. I was just, I'm just relaying that information. Right, that no, no, but I'm really not trying to be, trying to be yeah. anything. So but but I, 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 that's why I'm just educating you that they have not been informed of that. Yeah. Like, I, I work with this guy every day. They have not been informed of that. And I don't have, has your, has your family been informed that they're expected to wear masks? No. Okay. No. Okay. No, that's encouraging. Again, he can be with children on the throttle there with that masking. He's saying he, his family doesn't know that either. That's, I think this is the biggest thing we're trying to convey. And you, and you just admitted that they're at the bottom of the list. Well, so with that, I, the masking piece doesn't isn't affecting 
the number of positive cases. I've never, never once said that. I don't, I don't believe that because last year, and the reason I can say that is again based on our experience in the past year and a half. Last year, when we had students all wearing masks and and strong compliance and no arguments um, over it, we didn't. There, there was no. We still had outbreaks of cases of positive cases, and we still had high number of kids quarantined. There, there wasn't. It, it wasn't the the magic answer. The question right now is the fact that we all we always do our best to to implement and follow those guidelines to set a good example. If we are not wearing masks right now, we're going to be quarantining large number of kids. And I don't want to be in the situation of reporting to the health department and, and being the one responsible for quarantining large number of kids. I, 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 that is what we've shared multiple times, and we're working through trying to get that changed. When, when, do, okay, when do we expect, to, uh, has the health department given us any indication on when they may be modifying their guidance? It is. I I don't have it. I, I know I know that they're working towards that, but I also know that it, it's a process we're working through. But it's not. I, I I'm sorry. I don't I don't know. Okay. I just don't. Can I say something here? Just a little something. Sure. Uh, the, what Mr. Schmidt is saying about Johnstown, I noticed that that person that wrote to the, we had a 45 minute conversation about all of this at church, after church. And, uh, and he did come out of the beginning stating that. Did he come out in my mouth? No. He was saying that he wanted people to encourage masks. He told me that person. And quickly, this was started. There's a change in that. Decided not to approve anything they say. In the meantime, well, if we're fired up, they have a whole football team quarantine to cancel the game. We have Lincoln Heights that had a high school close down to the Lincoln Valley. Lincoln Valley. We started seeing things going along. And we um, didn't see things starting later. We didn't know this at all. Gives you a little clear picture of what's starting to happen across the nation now. So I, I just want to share that yes, you know, I know for a fact what he's doing. I know for a fact he's no longer saying that. I'm sorry, you know, Archie. I don't think he, they're no longer, he's no longer saying anything, whether he's encouraging or not encouraging in my class. But sure. I know he started the year out that way. And um, I do know that that board is going to support that. I do know that they've had a lot of issues. I do know that they're not uh, reporting. They're not cooperating. Good. Oh, that's 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 the way we discovered it is we stopped at the rules. Let me share 
you know, I really worked to listen and take notes when everyone was speaking. I didn't jump out of my seat. I didn't go crazy. I didn't make comments to my neighbors. I really took my time to try to listen and understand your points. I'm just ask me for the same respect. There are the, the idea that we can say we can, we can wear a mask if we want to is where we would like to get to. However, the reality is with, with the peer pressure situation, kids were not wearing masks. And so those kids were inadvertently setting themselves up to be quarantined because the girl across the desk room that they liked, or the boy, you know, their boy that thought was cool that, you know, didn't want to wear a mask, so they're not going to wear a mask. Those kids were inadvertently making a decision that was going to cause them to be quarantined. So if it was as simple as these parents want, you know, I want my kids to wear a mask, they would go to school and wear a mask, then, then our problem would be over. Because then you had made the decision for your child not to wear a mask, and you fully knew that they were going to run the potential of being quarantined. Problem is, there were multiple kids not wearing masks that their parents wanted them to because uh, of the peer pressure. And so it's, it's a collective goal that we're trying to work through for the greater good of all students. Give them just a little more time, and I promise we are trying to work through this. But these schools that have 200, 300, 485 kids quarantined in one <laughs> district right now. Uh, and it's 480 kids quarantined. I know it is not fun wearing a mask. I don't enjoy wearing a mask. But I also don't enjoy when my child is stuck at home for 10 days being quarantined for something they don't need to be quarantined. I work need to get this corrected. But in the meantime, if, if we are not doing masks, then we are spending our time sitting kids home, home that don't need to be sent home. I, I don't know how else to say it. I know that we can keep talking about this for three, four, five more hours. There's other work that has to be done this evening. That's, that is my, that is my there is a way to have a entire kids in school without the case on the bracket. The kids can be unmasked. What COVID is a parasitized particle where you can see the only way to use the concentration of the parasitized particle is through a test. If you increase the air flow, Clean air to every classroom. If you use things like ozone or UV to kill off the virus, then you can achieve everything that everyone is asking for. And you can do that with the SR ones. You have that. What is that? 1.6 million? And just divert a little bit of that to the HVAC system, make some changes. Everyone will be happy. Good idea. Okay? That's the idea. Well, tell me, uh, total, total, total active cases as of 917 is 14 positive student cases. That's students quarantine. 14. No, we also oh, have yeah. we also have 14 Four. students quarantining due to school contact. You have well, you put a new uh, a new thing on there, community contact. 
we did, we divided we divided the information out to I report. I don't see still still see a week from 9-11 to 9-17. Elementary had four positive students, one positive staff. Middle school had one positive student, one positive staff, and the high school had four positive students. I don't see where that equals 14. My mask says five. I'm, I'm looking at the bottom. I'm looking at the bottom row as far as total active cases. So last week we had 14 total active cases, student cases. The week, the week before that, we had 11 total active student cases. The week prior to that, we had five total student active. Um, it is so once once a student is identified as an active case, some if, if they are if they continue to show symptoms, they are an active case, which could go beyond the ten day isolation period. So so they fall off, not have Correct. So yeah, and that's and that's why we reported the new cases reported this week and then the, the active cases. So the top of that dashboard has new cases in the week, the bottom has the active cases. We have had some students who have exceeded that 10-day period with symptoms. And so it's not an exact like. I, I can't say that they're always on there for two weeks. Typically, an active case will be 10 days from the day they test. Well, my point is, it's not a new person each time. Listed no, that's very. It, it could carry over a total active case. Yes. It's, it's it is not it is not misleading the fact that it's it's clarified up at the top that we're reporting new cases. That are newly reported each week. The total number of current active cases new reported each week. And then the bottom is the, the total active cases. So if we switch it to a quarantine situation, like how many kids are we quarantine or are quarantine this week? And then how many kids total are on quarantine? So that it's it's clear that there are new cases reported and then the active cases. And if we're talking about the positive active cases, those would be active for 10 days from date of testing, or if your symptoms continue, it would be at the interior We also said we were last year, this time we were hybrid last year, this time I believe. So how are we comparing couples in the record this year? And I'm, I'm, I'm not getting here. No, I didn't say yes, I was waiting for the health department, but the temporary piece is as, as right now, and we all know that as statements have been made and, and expectations have been put in place over the past 18 months, that things change frequently. I'm telling you that right now, if our cases continue to increase, I, I would expect that we would continue to wear masks so that we don't have a large number of students quarantined. Unless the quarantine will change. The cases aren't, we have cases like this last year. Last year, the cases were not in the beginning of the year. You had weeks like this before last year. Okay. Yeah, we'll close this year. This is what Mr. Smith recommended. I mean, I still want the board to vote on this. I want to know who we get stand. Yeah, well, I don't see why it's so good. It's not over. We're going to take a, a five minute recess. We'll get that to you. We'll start turning up the night. Are you going to warn me? What? Are you going to warn me? I'm going to bring you. If my son is a wedding to require me, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just, I just didn't hear you.
sporting equipment and cleats and things available. But the pink push is, is the Viking gear piece. Um, so they are currently collecting used Viking gear, and the idea is, hey, we can all have more school spirit. Anyone can go in there and and peruse the Viking uh, clothing. We want it to be very acceptable that anyone can go grab a, a Viking t-shirt, Viking sweatshirt. Um, and while you're in there, if you notice there's some food that you need or school supplies, anyone is welcome to pick up those as well. So um, that's that's the idea behind the Viking Exchange. Um, a small group of, of volunteers have been working on that in uh, accepting donations and work to get that open. We'll be excited to share that with students here shortly. Uh, we've had kids working on getting all that set up as well, too. So uh, and there are, they're doing a t-shirt sale, we'll send information out as well, you can see it on their Facebook page, the North Bay Education Foundation, uh, but they've designed two really cool patriotic um, uh, slash Viking um, t-shirts, uh, fundraisers for the month of September, uh, and our goal would be to have the, uh, kids wear those on uh, a Veterans Day next. All right, we are on our work discussion item. Uh, and then this is the night. It's a uh, 10, 10 for each question. So we up to this team. Yeah. That's a page. It's on page two there. Right. 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 Where would I play in the Kind of the first business initiative I remember the I think that's what it would be like. Yeah. 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 I'll say. Second of all, point, discussion of the agenda. I do appreciate the uh, major service to show up North Carolina. I have a question. Um, Jeff, you the amendment about the certificate of best practice resources. We talked about this on the finance committee, but thought that this is kind of an idea. This is a new uh, transfer. Yeah, this is uh, just to, this is your, uh, well, you have, you have temporary to start the year on July. Who's the roof? Is that? Is that the roof? I think it was a picture today. Is that it? Is it a picture? Attachment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's this. Yeah, that, does that have to be the same one? No? Can this be part of the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Because the way I read it, it says that it has a formal resolution. You know what it has? Like, what was from the last time? I know what you're saying. I've always had it. Oh. Yeah, I think I should remember that. If, you, if you're satisfied with that, okay. I'm okay. good. Okay. With no further discussion, Mr. Lewis, we call it. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Good point. Yes. Mr. Yes. Purple. Yes. Spamble. Yes. That's a small zero. Now we've got 
board recommendation to approval of superintendent the treasurer of the deck. Uh, uh, I just got a page I did too. Page six. All right. Uh, all right, so now we got we have our uh, separate our separate consideration item uh, presenting some form is a uh, volunteer. And obviously that's cool because our point will uh uh is our option to approve. I'll make it one second. Mr. Baron, one second, Mr. Shrock, to approve the point of volunteer. And uh, Mr. Lewis, please call the roll. Mr. Shrock? Yeah. Mr. Coyne? Yeah. Uh, abstain. Mr. Hart? Yeah. Mr. Burkle? Yeah. Mr. Bamber? Yeah. And the motion passes for zero and one extension. Mr. Coyne. All right. Now we're going to write recommendation 17 to approve construction change orders. Mr. Smith, you want to go through that? Yep. So these are uh, change orders that were smaller and in style and kind of flowing at the uh, end of the year that we uh, have left to clean up. Um, three uh, concrete bases for the handicap ADA compliance signs in front of. So additional additional drywall finishing uh, in high school for that office uh, room piece. Uh, adding a couple uh, receptacles in the middle school high school office. Um, we installed two uh, volleyball holes in the system, but the one that was ordered, or one that systems ordered. Uh, wheelchair impact at the elementary school. Uh, currently, wheelchairs, uh, even though there's two levels, there's they're open on each end, so equipment can get under there. Kids can get under there as well, so putting the caps on there for when they're going to call out for. Uh, we had a couple of uh, restroom doors that did not have the privacy occupied, uh, in floors only. Um, Final doors um, in the reception area, some of them are not open to call out and have locks on them. That would be to have some additional locks. Integrated breathing system and the phone system, we are to wait for the phones. Um, soil preparation prior to uh, seeding uh, for weed control there. Our favorite topic of uh, having to undercut the weather of wet soils and make the ground stable for paving for the neighborhood road. That's for the driveway because that's not the driveway from the top of the um, And then we need to change the way some blocks operate from doors and corridor for the road. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Thoughts and ends of the getting towards the end of the road. <coughs> I motion to approve recommendation 17 and change order. I'll make it. From the party, second from the truck, three recommendation 17. Discussion? I appreciate you bringing those forward, even though you uh, could, have, could have gone ahead. It's just kind of transparency that you, you uh, routinely engage in that throughout the project and really never did do it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Lewis, please call the roll. Mr. Truck? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Corny? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
So I think with the hour, uh, maybe we have some questions about we want to work with Mr. Schmidt on a couple of things of his. Uh, actually, thinking about a couple of things in years, I think we want to do more for years. Uh, general, I think I think we're on track with some recommendations and some tweaking. So we can do that and we can do a little tweaking. But I don't think we'll be set back by uh, Actors, if they're they're pretty much in place, and they add a couple of measurables and things like that here and there. But I think we're on the right track with them. Um, Boards and sets, um, but obviously without Mr. Lewis is here tonight, not going to be able to do any of that. So uh, what is the uh, there's a motion to table. What is the next question? What we got on that? What is the contract? Yeah, really. Does it not? It really does. It's like making it. It's not a competition. It's Opposed? I'm carried by voice vote. Item 12, board recommendation number one is to the shot item 13, business initiative and members of the board. Yes. Yeah. 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 I would like to make a motion that this board let the mask mandate be left to parents and students to wear masks in class, at school, or any other function at work, which includes the use of football games, basketball games, and giving back to parents the right to make those decisions which are best for their child. I think these parents that we have in this district are intelligent enough and smart enough to know we really need to be wearing masks all the time. That they would see that. And so I'm asking that we take a vote. We have a mass decision up to the students by the parents, and not to the school. I'll second that. Very good. A motion by Mr. Schrock. I'll summarize it by saying the mass mandate, and then send it over to Mr. Burkle. Discussion. I had a question on the that the list of mass managers for students and staff. I would say I would say if we're going to lift it for the students, we should lift it for the uh, staff too as well. Yeah. Which is clarification Mr. Burkholder, I've seen your second with stand for that. Yeah. So we understand clarification. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Discussion. Um, I'll start. Right. I truly do respect and appreciate the fact that our parents came out this evening. But I also want everyone in the room to understand that there are parents in this district that were not able to be here tonight to speak their opinions. They have also communicated with us that actually they have the opposite opinion. So you, everybody in this district needs to understand there's two sides to everything. Uh, yes. So everyone oh, has yes. their own opinion. You need to be respectful. Of what every family has to say. I agree with that. If there's a awareness, then they shouldn't be afraid. This, 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 this is not, this is about having children in school five days a week. And we have to be able to understand that that is what our goal is. And we need to make certain. 
that we're allowed to teach our students five days a week. And based on that, I have to make my decision. I have to make my decision based on what's best for every single student, pre-K through our older individuals, even that are older than 12th grade because they're in um, special situations. We have to understand that that is our responsibility to ensure that every student can be educated. And what we saw last year is that every student was not here five days a week. Rules changed. We're now in a different situation and we have to live with what our current rules are. And I do believe that Mr. Smith works with the health department and, and he actually changes and communicates daily with the health department and with the board and with his staff as things change. You might not be able to see it, but he is on top of what's going on and trying to make the best decision for our staff and our students. I, my vote is no, Mr. Charles. Well, I understand that there are people who do not make tonight and who are no votes because I did get a text message from one who was against, you know, lifting the mandate. But that's not a thing. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you have that choice. You can send your child to school tomorrow with a mask on if they want to wear one. If they don't want to wear one, then they shouldn't have to be forced to wear one. It's, you know, a gentleman brought up a good point earlier, which I did when I came here tonight, is, gee, I've seen thousands of people at Ohio State football games for the last two weekends not wearing masks. You know, and I was just saying, you know, so it's like in Franklin County in Columbus just many weeks ago before this last game, masks are being worn from the club. Indoors. So, indoors. That was indoors. No, So it's kind of like in indoors, we're still bringing the same air of the marbles when it's indoors or outdoors. And going to be somebody going to be right next to you. Um, I just feel that we are taking away the right. So the child and the parent to make that decision in that time. I, I do want the parents to understand one thing. The board does not make the day-to-day -day decision as to how the school district is run. That is up to the superintendent and the principals and his staff. I am trying right now to make a change, and that's what our job is up here. And also to make sure that the bills get paid and so forth. So that's what, you know, I'm just asking this board to make the right decision and uh, give back the parents their right and their child their right, whether they want to wear one or not. I hate wearing these things all day long indoors without one on with other people. So it's like, I don't get it. I really don't. And I'll have to agree with Mr. Trump. Uh, honestly, I'm a teacher. I work in another school district. It's hot mask optional, but I taught all year. Every day, all day, every day, we had to shut down for a couple of days in the neighboring school district because the case rate went high. I have this argument really is not about the utility of maps, honestly. I mean, honestly, I what what uh, little information I've seen that's actually been published is if at best it has a marginal uh, rate at best. And even we're at M95, yeah. And even then, there's a question. And in certain settings, 
it is useful, like if you're in the dentist's office or doctor's office, where there's a high high rate of infection, possibility of infection. I get that. I don't think that's the argument. At least when it was communicated to me, what why we were doing this is it was because of quarantine rules, which I disagree with. I think they're unreasonable. I think they're owners. They don't make a lot of sense in many cases. They confuse me. Board member, they confuse me as a teacher. Um, that said, and, and, and I'm fully, you know, I, I agree with the sentiment that parents should have the own choice what goes on with their children. Whether they want to send their kid to a private school, they want to, I'm not going to downgrade somebody because they go to a private school or they choose to homeschool their kids. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that's their decision. With the mask mandate, I don't like it. I'm, I'm inclined to support your motion, except for the fact that I'd like to give Mr. Schmidt a little bit more time to try to work it. It has been two weeks. Kind of goes back to Mr. Schrock but before getting involved in making new business. But generally, there's some things I, that Mr. Schmidt has done, I disagree with, but because it's day to day business, I'm not going to step, I'm not going to step in. I did that with some of his predecessors. I might call him and say I disagree, but I'm not going to go against you because that's interference. For instance, you know, hiring football coaches, for instance, which some school boards have gotten into. However, temporary is temporary. And at some point, if we continue to mask mandate, I believe the board probably should go on right now, apparently going on right now, sooner rather than later, just like today. So I'm disinclined to support the motion right now. I, I sympathize with it. I get where you're coming from. It's mainly just the time. I, I think because of the quarantine rule that we're under, I don't want to throw kids out uh, unnecessarily because of the current quarantine rule. I don't think they make a lot of sense. My, this is my personal opinion. They don't make a lot of sense. They're confusing. They've changed a couple of times. And I agree with conflicted by this, but I think I, I, I'm willing to give Mr. Schmidt, just he asked a little bit more time. I'm going to give Mr. Schmidt a little more time to go forward. I will collect the vote no on the motion at this time. Thank you, Colonel. I feel, I feel very much the same way you do. I don't like maps either. I'm not convinced that they work at all, but really that doesn't matter. As you say, it's all about the quarantine rule. And for now, um, those quarantine rules are, are, I mean, if we didn't, if, 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 if Mr. Schultz's motion for pass right now, kids on that, we, we could be looking at having to call 30, uh, what, we're talking about nine, eight, nine kids. Today, today we have five, no, no, 45, potentially 45 kids um, that, that might be looking at, at quarantine. And not being able to, to go to school for, for seven to ten days. Um, that's and, and but it's ridiculous. And that's why I go back to Mrs. Key and her question about under what a high order code section are we compelled to do contract contract tracing on behalf of the Lincoln County Health Department? I wrote in my margin, good question. I don't know. The extra sections, there's a federal supremacy or something like that going on. Um, there's a gentleman on the board that I certainly never had to practice during COVID time. Kind of glad, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to do that. But I just, I want, I want to answer that question. And we're going to get an answer to that question. And if we're, I mean, we're providing information that we're not legally obligated to provide, we're doing a disservice to the kids. And to the parents, and, and I want to, I want to know if we can work within the rules and take down this mass mandate because if we're not reporting contact tracing, they've got the races to quarantine again. Now all of a sudden it, it won't matter. Um, I understand. I understand that, that people would encourage us not to follow these guidelines. That maybe there's some ability on behalf of the, of, the, of the county health department, the state health department, 
to inflict something on us. I want an answer to that too, and know exactly what it is that we're facing. I've been operating under the belief that they can, but, but I realize now that I don't know if they can or not. But I don't want to make a decision that's ignorant and, and, and unaware. And I'm, and I'm not going to encourage or, 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 or ask our staff to engage in something that, that um, you know, just thumb our noses at, 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 at the people that are trying to do their jobs. So we, we need people to follow the rules we have at school. We expect, we expect the students are going to do that. Uh, we hope they make sense. They don't always. But, but in order to maintain some degree of order and, and basically for them to figure out how to get along in life, you're going to, once in a while, encounter something that doesn't make any sense. But sooner or later, we need to run down the answers to these questions. So I want to give Mr. Schmidt time to look into those questions and get back to me on them and, and further work on just how long this temporary measure is going to remain in place. And I would expect that depending on what the answers are, we could have a special meeting or it could be just to show the side um, that, that, that it's not something that's warranted anymore. Um, Can I ask another uh, quick clarification of that question? Sure. It's always been common, I mean, pre COVID, both as a parent and kids. Both my sons graduated from here, by the way, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but as, as a teacher, it was also understood, well, not an administrator, I'm just a teacher, uh, but it was always understood that once you hit 20%, at that point, they had the authority to shut a school down or, rec or at least recommend. I'm not sure where that comes from. It was always kind of common now. Like, for instance, a couple of years ago, Northridge almost shut down. Northport did shut down over influenza A or B a couple of years ago. Um, and maybe that was their record. Maybe that's why South was looking shut down because 20% of the population was shut the entire district down. I don't know. Some say it's not prematurely. I don't know if it was under those circumstances why they shut down. But I know a lot of, a lot of schools right now are approaching, I can speak anecdotally, at least about one. I was taking attendance, and there were numbers approaching 20% of absence rates, and you've probably seen some of those. Yeah, so that 20% 20, that 20 is not absolute, but that's a, that's a number that we have used in the past. Pre code. Pre code. Um, with, with known uh, illness. Right. When you were building principal, that was the standard that most districts used. If they got, if they got to a point, that would definitely, that would definitely get our attention. Um, However, honestly, when, when we're at about 10% absentee rate from, from these classrooms, that, that gets a decision to start to put stuff. You hear it talked about the 20% piece. So that's the, is that just, is that a, a rule or is that just kind of a general rule of thumb that we use? We as July, we, uh, offhand, I, I, it has to be just a, a general rule of thumb. It's not a, it's not a prescriptive piece. Okay. I, I, I would ask that question because maybe. Sure. I mean, it's been around. It's, I think it's more about being the tipping point. It's it's been that way for for quite a while. We shut down for Hong Kong school, and it, when we were twenty percent, when I was in grade school, uh, back in '68, '67, something like that, where you were in my yeah, we, we had my school district shut down for, for a couple days. of a couple I mean, years. We had twenty percent, so maybe that's something just to check. Maybe they do have that. Before. Because before we do anything, if we do pull it, I'd like to know what our options are. If yeah, so, so they have, uh, public health has the responsibility to control epidemics and, and contagious disease outbreaks. And they have a variety of, of methods to go about okay. that. So with things that we know more about and have history with, that 20% is normally there. We've talked about that for this year. We've been asking for thresholds. Okay. What threshold would the, the state put in, or would the, the local county health department put in place that would require us to shut down? Um, they they don't want they don't want to be. There's no clear answer on that because it's continuing to change, and so they're trying not to be overly prescriptive um, and say if you hit this number, you have to do this. 
because there are there are multiple variables. Um, we have we have a um, I can speak to us personally, but trying to talk broadly to protect you know students and families' individual uh, information in the fact that like when we have a student that's sick, we we are watching to make sure that there are other kids in that group that or in that classroom that are sick. Or when we have you know someone involved in activity, we're watching those other pieces to, to kind of stay on top. The health department helps us watch absentee rates as well and their communication. But every as we run through this, every decision is kind of different. So I, I can't speak to why the schools have closed the classroom or closed the building. Um, I know you talk at least to the other superintendents. Mm -hmm. You keep us advised on yes as yes. much as you know, not only but I mean just uh, it would be important to know what other districts are doing. I mean just for trend lines because they've been exposed at yes. least for a week and a half now that we have. So and so I I will Mr. Hart, I heard heard your questions as well from from our public participation tonight and, and we will but Ohio Revised Code 33.13.68 uh, requires that schools cooperate with health departments to control uh, epidemics. And another key piece of this. 16, sorry. 33.13.68. And so we'll, we'll dig into that and review that more again. Um, and then it is Ohio Revised Code 37.07.08. Um, that talks about the different classes of reportable diseases. Because that's a question about kind of like you know why are we reporting COVID cases, and that's because uh, COVID falls into a class A reportable disease, whereas according to the health department, influenza A and influenza B uh, are not in that same reportable uh, class A case. Good. And, and again, just to remind the board, you know, no one, no one is working in in isolation or on their own <laughs> own devices here. We we have been working with uh, the different health departments. We've been working with our legal team um, through every step of this process uh, from the very beginning. So they're not they're not independent decisions of. Uh, what Mr. Schmidt personally believes, their their decisions based on how do we best operate the school. And I can best operate the school when I have kids in the school. I, and I really appreciated your absolute diligence throughout this and the way you dug into this. And um, everything you've done, in my estimation, has, has always been your government, what is best for the kids, best for the school district. Um, as, as Colonel Corney indicated, You've never made any pretense that you've got on, on, on always being right, but um, you've, you've always been more than been willing to admit when when you got something wrong, and, and but, but you're also you've always been very decisive in terms of being willing to move forward um, after you after you had you believe your act back. So I appreciate that. Um, I, I want to. I want, to, I want to give this just a little more time, but I, I mean, I, my patience isn't um, going to be unending either. But, but, I, but I, I, I don't think an abrupt end tonight would be, would be appropriate. So, it's a shock I would imagine one roll call vote. Roll call vote. So I'm thinking, uh, first day, Yes. Well, so, so, yeah, you can amend the Oh, I'll certainly commit to call a special. 
at, at your request. I mean, then the two board members can call special anyway. But I, I, I just think about it. it's like with maybe September 30th is the end date for the mass. No, we go ahead. Pardon? No, they're going to we will continue the rest of the month. We can give it a little more time. I'll go to first. We would start. We would start the. It uh, would be optional for the student to wear a mask. And just to give you time from us, whatever, there's something really different. But just for the back numbers. And um, and we can hold a special meeting for that. Yes. I'm trying to cover a middle ground here. I would like to have that so I, I can vote yeah. not tonight on the circumstances we know tonight. But we, can, we can find out about these two Ohio advice committees. What authority does the local health, health department have on us as far as contact tracing and uh, and other things? Uh, I'd like to vote with more information. And, and you so know, we've not pushed out. Say, all right, it's going to end this day. And we'd look, as a board, we might look a little silly. Yeah, we have to have to shut down the rest of the If we decided to fax with us, we need to. Right. I mean, if, 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 if half the town is closed down due to quarantine, probably not it's going to be. Well, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but let's say it does. I'd like to vote, I'd like to vote on the day to fax your hand. Well, we have more fresh facts if we vote on it as opposed to saying, I'm going to vote on something that's going to take effect for 10 days. I think you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mr. Strauss. So I think, I think where we're at on, 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 on the motion is, I mean, do you, you want to propose an amendment to your motion? Um, make it effective October 1st. That's correct. And, and Mr. Brooke, are you seconding that? Yeah. That uh, amendment. Yeah. So that takes us to we now have we now have a, a motion to amend uh, inserting that effective date. You know, I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to support that, but I'm not going to support the the final amended motion if I do <laughs> because I still for the same reasons that Colonel Corny indicated. I, I, I would rather I'd rather consider the facts as they develop when they develop. Um, I, I would rather be leading up to what we can do. Um, to consider consider how things are then and then either either do it effective our October first or not. Mr. Schmidt's aware what's going on and, and, and we'll we'll have thoughts to, to share as we go forward. But 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 well, um, we just plan on having another meeting a week. You want to table this motion? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it, it, I might as well because it's not going to go anywhere as it is where it sounds. So we've got a motion by Mr. Sharp to table the motion. I'll second that. All those in favor of table the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And then opposed? Again. And motion carried by votes with voice vote. And so now we can talk about a, we can talk about um, we're gonna have a meeting. We will we'll plan to have a meeting in approximately a week. Talk talk more about this with, 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 with a view to possibly making them ask um, an unmasking decision, if you will. Uh, in fact, the first bucket. I'm all over the place in terms of that, that, that timing and that, that place. So, how's that? I'm yeah, I, you. A week from today, I'm, I have a conflict, so I think we'll find it. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out a day. Plus, I, yeah, there, I'll, I, I can meet sometime. Your schedule, your schedule, and your shop schedule, and you can probably I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Are you out of town? Oh. I think it's very important that you guys have a Okay. I think it's important. I think it's I think it's important to address, but I still think I'd like to give Mr. Smith just a little bit more time to explore a couple a couple things. Yeah. And so I think two things for the record, if I may. Sure. Number one is 
none of us have time in the, in the district to be doing extra work. Okay. Extra work that we don't have to be doing. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have the, the definitive answer to, to the question of what requires us to do that, but that has I need the board or I need to know that we have vetted that previously. We received guidance from our you know lawyers and across our associations that those were things that we need to be doing. So I, I want the board to I know I asked one. I, I did one. I remember asking that question as well. Yeah. Uh, but, but not getting chapter and verse because time it, it, it just it, it, it made sense that that would exist. And, uh, the, the thing that's interesting to me is there's a lot of things, there's a lot of policies, procedures, and things not only at the local level, but local level meaning Northbridge School District, but you move that up to every other local level. Yeah. Right? Dealing with and, and the school was mandated. Mandated. Not mandated. Mandated. That's, that's that's mandated. That's the federal mandate. That's the question of transportation. We, we can't overrule. We, we, we can't touch that. That one we can't change. change. The best mind that as it stands right now. That's the part of the So I will bring I will have all that to bring forward again and that will provide its guidance. But it's important to know that like these policies around the pandemic, uh, I just probably check and look to see when they were last uh or when they were first approved but like, you know it, it would have been an interesting conversation at that time because no one in the right time to dealt with the pandemic so why do we be approving this policy policy around the pandemic so right just know there there are things in place that have been in place for a period of time they're not all recent changes in education the other thing that i think is important to know from a transparency standpoint and, and would be something that Mr. Hart, you have to work through is typically at um, per, per policy, public participation is at the regular board meeting. We can always write all the Right. But that would be something that we want to be, if, if for some reason, by nature, there's not public participation at a special meeting, we want to just clarify whether there was going to be or wasn't going to be, because our, our policy doesn't require it at, at special meetings. It needs to be required at that. Oh, correct. Okay. So I'm, I'm not saying that we wouldn't do that, but again, it probably just require, just putting it in, probably require a board vote to change that. Yeah, yeah we, so can, we can have that on the ground as board vote. Yeah, it has to be, be clarified. That we would allow we public that comment correct. during that special meeting. You, you can't, you don't have. Huh? There's no flexibility, especially. Yeah, I'll put it on you down. There's one more. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> the, the point behind that is the fact that we can't call a special meeting to say that, you know, we're hired, we're, we are hiring, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with general, general 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 special meeting. You are limited to your agenda. Yeah. What you sent out to the right. you sent out public, unless you sent out a, unless you sent out a notice to the public that says that the, the purpose of the meeting right. is, is is general consideration or some whatever whatever your official term is. And if you have that sent out, and you really are doing that, you can't, you can't just say you are to do one issue. You have to actually. Right. Otherwise, you violate the sunshine laws, and that's not a good thing. Violate it. Oh, yeah. I make a motion that uh, we vote to extend curtain. Is there a second? I'll second. It's actually 10 o'clock straight up for this. So. We're not going to get done. Well, I don't know. 10 seconds. There's no. All those in favor? Extend the curfew. Signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Curfew is extended at 10 o'clock. Right on the phone. Good captain. <laughs> uh, who is who is the second on that? On the uh, on the motion to yes. on the motion to table or on the on, on the motion to extend extend curfew. That was that was bam. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have a plan on how we're gonna how we're gonna proceed from here on uh, dealing with. With uh, masks. Today, we're going to be initiated by members of the board of directors. No? All right. 
Number two.
coaches actually utilize that gym, so it's not even all the kids are utilizing it. It's my understanding that the janitor is there anyway, Monday through Friday, until a certain amount of time. So we're not even paying to have a janitor there to monitor us. If you raise the cost to us, the NYAA, we're going to have to then raise the cost of fees to our parents. I'd like you guys to remember that the people that paid for the facilities here are the same people we're going to have to ask to raise fees. Personally, I think $10 is a little ridiculous, but that has been going on for years, so I'm not going to argue the current cost, but to raise the cost again to parents that are already paying for these facilities is just not right. So I'm just asking that the board consider this when and, when and if this does become an agenda item, that there are other solutions. I'm sure that some of the concern is the wandering kids of the elementary. There were gates at the primary in Alexandria. I would suggest putting up a gate if you're worried about kids wandering. Also, we can definitely tell our parents and our coaches and our commissioners to keep the kids where they're supposed to be, which is in the gymnasium. Um, so obviously we will keep encouraging that and making sure the kids don't want to go to school. Um, but please, if it does become an agenda item, please remember who's paying for these facilities and we don't want to have to raise costs to those things. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for your comment. And, and I really appreciate you bringing that to our attention. I think uh, it signals that we need to work with, with NYAs in, in some form of partnership to move forward with this and not make any changes that, that don't make sense. Thank you. Thank you. I think the voice is going to talk. There's been no discussion whatsoever raising fees to NYA. Ten dollars. Oh my gosh, that came about nine years ago um, when we came up with a new fee structure. And the fee structure just wiped the NYA out under the new what was approved. Um, the cost of using our facilities was astronomical. My idea that to get to have NYA use the facilities money for Friday because we do have a custodian on duty, and it didn't cost me anything. We weren't charging for that. We weren't charging for electricity. We weren't charging for cleaning. Uh, we were barely charging for the use of toilet paper, paper towels. And that was discussed by the NYA group at the time, uh, the president of the group there. Um, and nobody has come back to talk to us from NYA in nine or nine years about cost. And we had a nice discussion about the kids are only using the, for a certain period of time. Uh, I think, I think the biggest concern that's coming out of the finance committee here is scheduling and use of the facilities. And that's the discussion we've been having. And how do you really how do you make sure the facilities are taken care of nicely? And uh, that's that's a concern that we do have. Well, we do need certainly to we don't want to ruin the facilities. Right. We're the ones paying for it. So right. it's certainly but stressed just, on our end to take care of the facilities. And you know, and when we first started this practices work here, I know they've been run off because we've lost space. Right. Right. You know, and we've lost practice space. So more than happy to have a conversation. More than happy to just want to go ahead and put out Conversation. Maybe we could, what we did nine years ago doesn't fit now. I, don't know. I have no idea. I just know it's the first I've heard that the dollar seems to be blocked. Well, if you put it in perspective on how much you're getting per year, or I don't think that we're doing $4,000 worth of wear and tear and toilet paper use at any facility. So I I'll be happy to attend a finance meeting or I'll have another board member see if they can attend a finance meeting and have this discussion. Give me a call. Come okay. on. I'll let them That's know. That's how we did the first one. <laughs> you don't want to get in a finance meeting and negotiate with them. <laughs> 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 I love them.
Which is that you left with our emails. <laughs> but it was alluded to at the August meeting. So there was a side. I think, I think the, the comment that, that, and I'll also stand up for my comment uh, is there is a concern about people not watching their children that aren't participating. And our custodians are the people to be babysitting and watching. They've got sure. jobs to do. And this building isn't as easy as the other one with gates. And that's that's problematic too. So we just have to work through that. And it's not just that building, it's all the facilities. And it's not just NYAA, it's all of that. So if I may seem like it's NYAA, I apologize because okay. it's not at all. It's really how do you control the use of your building by non participants? That's the best way I can say it. And, 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 uh, and, and do we need to have? Full time uh, building manager, for lack of a better word, uh, that is, is managing those events. That it's a bigger global discussion than anyway, not that at all. And I don't disagree with that when you look at the use of softball, baseball, I'm not using a little bit of this at all. So let's have a chat about it and figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Glad you brought it up. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for uh, following up. Seems like the peer pressure you guys can talk about. A lot of kids, if they are Christian, they can just feel like they have to hide here because you can be you can be fun of situation. So we want to provide a safe place for students to just gather and talk about the Bible, talk about how their life relates to God. If you just generally like what we want to be true of our, our group is based out of scripture. Um, but when Jesus was asked, like, you know, he said, uh, a guy came up and said, teacher, what is the best, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded, he said, it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So our group would be kids that just love God and love others. That's that's the major goal of our kids. Um, and then the, all those uh, the Viking values uh, are very thoroughly biblical. So we'd be trying to build those into the students, looking at discussing biblical concepts and how can we live out these these values in, in the daily life. How can we serve here at Northridge in different ways? So. We we'll have a caring community, we we'll have leadership opportunities. The kids will be leading a lot of the things. It's not just like for me to lead or something, but we, we 
can trust the students to be uh, this a lot of things. Um, and it'll be definitely open and open and invite. Uh, we'll have we'll teach the kids how to discuss things and how to not even if they and they'll have respect for the other people, even if they don't have the same opinion. Same if they don't if they don't agree, they'll still have they'll just be able to have a, a mutual respect. That's part of what we this it's too easy to be on Facebook or whatever and just sign everybody but we're not gonna do that. Anyways, that's we we hope we've already gotten like approval like to be a good along here here like back in February. Um we've got Justin Dragger, um, a few coaches and stuff are, are for it. Um and uh we're, we just you know how to get out of here. So I just love it. if you guys could discuss that and just make it official then we can because we can't advertise or anything without that. <laughs> so that's next big friend. Well, so Adam, thank you for for coming tonight and thank you as well for, for being here. It's not normal this morning this evening. Just um, my first one. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, you know, and Mr. Greider has forwarded this on. We talked previously, and, and Mr. Greider has forwarded this on to me. There's a couple of things that I need to check to make sure we were, we're doing it correctly to, to be able to move forward. And so that's kind of on me that I haven't gotten those answers. I, I apologize. Um, I'll make that a priority back to you before the end of the week about um, how best to, to present this and, and be able to move forward. Um, so, Okay. I apologize for that, that delay. That's, that's kind of on my shoulders. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Announcements. Any announcements tonight? Not hearing any. All right. We will reaffirm the time and place of our next board meeting, which is. Our next regular meeting, which is Monday, October 18th, 2021. We are uh, tentatively planning a uh, special meeting for uh, not this coming Wednesday, the 22nd, but I guess it would be the 29th. Um, mm -hmm. September. Um, I think I think time and, and place is still to be determined. It could be here. Mm -hmm. Format and all that stuff. Okay. Oh, right. so, yeah. Exactly. That, 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 that's, I think, very possible. Our committee meetings we have an academic excellence committee meeting Wednesday, September 22nd, 6 30. That's going to be a virtual online meeting. And the finance committee is set to meet Wednesday, October 13th, 6 p.m. That'll be over in the district office. We're if you do any Zoom on that and more yeah, yeah. Zoom also. So it's a hybrid. hybrid. It would be a hybrid yeah. it would be office um, for a That concludes our uh, public agenda. As, as uh, Deputy Hodgson indicated in his uh, remarks earlier, we do need to get together and uh, discuss details relative to the security arrangements and emergency response protocols to the school. Uh, we need to do that in uh, executive session as disclosure of those matters. Certainly could reasonably be expected to uh, jeopardize the security of the school. And so on that basis, I'm, I'm moving to the end of executive session now. Is there a second? No second. Motion by myself, second by Kirk Corny, that I'm in executive session for either the state of Mr. Lewis, please call the Mr. Shaw. I'm going to move along. Yeah, it's just a security. Okay. Yeah. Recording. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Recording. Mr. Hubbard. <laughs> yes. Mr. Burke Holder. Yeah. Mrs. Bamley. Yes. On one condition, yes. We are not here all night long. We will not be here all night long. Okay. Oh. short update, Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan, will we be a short meeting?
What kind of one do you know? Who wants to leave this bad version of this? I might say just because we don't vote for that on Facebook because there's no uh, decision coming out. We will not come back on two seconds to each other. Right, okay. Right. 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 Right.